live. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome to uh, my show, uh, Friday, September 24th, uh, 2021. The last day of the week. It's option expiry day. Oh, my gosh. Lots is going to happen today. Lots is going to happen today. Uh, another exciting time here at the OK Corral. Welcome to Stock Markets with Bruce. I'm your buddy, Uncle Bruce. Uh, you see this address down here? Um, this is the new P.O. box that I've set up. So if any of you want to send me anything, you want to send me a postcard from where you live or uh, you want to uh, send me, uh, you know, a Rolex watch or diamond rings or, you know, yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> uh, there's the address. P.O. Box 23141 um, RPO Mission. What, is it? what does that mean? It's a regional post office mission. Uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and then T2S2B1. So you, you mail it to that address, and the post office knows what to do. They, they, it's just a PO box at one of their regional post offices. It's quick, quick, quick. quick. Um, my uh, my daughter has a key to this box. I've got a key to this uh, box, and um, uh, about once a week or so, uh, a a check will be made on. If you send a parcel to me. For whatever reason, you're going to send me a Yoko Ono album, or, or you're going to send me a, a jar of uh, grape jelly from Welch's, uh, which people will do. Uh, it's okay. You can send it to this P.O. box. They'll put a little slip of paper in there and say, you have a package. Then you pull that out, you walk to the counter, and they give you the package. Uh, so thank you, all of you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, it's there. Uh, this should be. This will be down below in all future um postings you know in my in my description area where they say where it says show more you click that you see all kinds of info this will be there going forward so thank you all uh i just wanted to make that uh, today make you uh, see that let you know that there's a new post office because uh, we're going to call calgary our kind of home base here and uh, work from there all mail that's been sent to creston is just being forwarded over here now for six months here in calgary so that should all go through fairly well. Thank you for joining me today. The markets are negative this morning on the pre-market, but they're not negative very much. And that uh, is an interesting um, thing to think about. Uh, we're looking at a 150 point drop on the Dow this morning to start the day. We had a big 500 plus day yesterday on the plus side. So this is, you know, this, this is a nothing burger. Uh, we're down 23 on uh, S&P and we're down 110 on uh, on Nasdaq so far this morning. The loser is Nasdaq, 0.73%. Uh, S&P down 0.54. Dow down 0.44%. Oil off 14 cents only at 73.17. What the oil market is not getting, just not getting it through their head. They're not figuring it out, or they don't want to figure it out. Maybe maybe there are the promoters who are promoting oil higher. There's a reason you promote oil higher higher profits for the oil patch. Every area of the oil patch, it's huge, it's massive. These guys are, are bound and determined to keep us worried about oil when we have nothing to worry about. Uh, <clears throat> kind of reminds me of that line in the movie, The Firm, you know, uh, I get paid to worry about things when there's nothing to worry about. Uh, uh, there's nothing to worry about here on oil. Um, but there are pros out there who are trying to really uh, hype up the market to keep oil up because they're desperate to have it not have it crash like it did last year. Crash it may, but uh, uh, oil really should be in the 40s, maybe 50s at best. Um, sorry, oil, but uh, there's so much of the, so much of it everywhere and there is so much cheating going on with respect to quotas and how much is being produced and who says, you know, well, we, we're producing a million barrels a day. Yeah, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We're producing 1.4 billion barrels a day um, because so many bribes are paid by third world countries that produce this stuff so many under the table cash deals are made um, uh, so many military generals have to be paid off to avoid coups you heard of coups you know c-o-u-p-s um yeah there's 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 oil is a commodity that is being used to keep people in power that shouldn't be in power uh, putin others um and so there's no way that, there, that that oil is going to stay here. It is so riddled with the corruption globally, uh, except for, say, North America, where you really have to audit your books and you have to show who does what. Uh, but in the third world and in the OPEC world, it is an absolute uh, crap show. It's a, it's a poop show over there. And um, 
it's a miracle that oil is at 73 bucks a barrel. Just, just a miracle. Uh, it shouldn't be. In any event, this is going to go lower because the China economy is in trouble and, and no one wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk to you about it in a plain English format. Everyone is talking about the, 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 um, the issues in a roundabout kind of way. It's kind of like looking at an apple. You hold up an apple and you go, oh, it's beautiful. It's all shined up. It looks great. Oh, it's fantastic. Look at how great that apple looks. Everything's bad. Cut it in half and then take a look at the inside of the darn thing, and it's all rotten to the core. And that is China right now. It is a crap show in China right now. Um, they can't even pay off their bond offerings, their bond interests for this Evergrande. Um, uh, this Evergrande bond interest payment that's due right now, $80 million, this is chump change. The Chinese government uh, should have already put up this a, a long time ago, put this away. Um, they should have taken this company over, should have nationalized it. They should have just bought up all the bonds that they ever issued and just be done with it and then arrest these people if you want or persecute them if you want, do whatever you want, but just take care of your foreign obligations. If you did that, we wouldn't be talking about anything to do with China. But see, this to me is the the uh, the shiny outside looks great, but this is the inside. This is a mess. This is the this is only one of probably hundreds of companies in China, maybe thousands of companies in China that are going to have the same problem that these guys have. Uh, these folks have borrowed money not only from domestic Chinese investors, but from foreigners. And this is the problem that China is now going to face. It is a pay up time to the outside world. And you can accuse the outside world of being, uh, you know, anti-China and being, uh, you know, uh, 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 agitators. You can accuse us of being, uh, you know, whatever you want to call, whatever word you want to come up with. But the reality is this, folks. Out here in the West, we lent you people, we lent you uh, a-holes money. It's time to pay us back. It's time to pay the interest on the money we've lent you. And if you can't cough it up, then you're insolvent. And if you're insolvent, we'll take measures to take care of it. It's just that simple. It's nothing personal. It's just business, okay? If you can't pay the nut, uh, then you don't have any street cred. And without street cred, you don't get any more money. It's it's kind of kind of like that. It's, it's kind of like, you know, it's time to pay the vig, all right? Cough it up. Uh, they have ways in New Jersey to, to settle scores like this and elsewhere. Now, in the, in the financial markets, the way we do it is we just cut you off. We don't issue you any more credit. It's, it's you know, it's, we do it in a gentlemanly kind of way. We wear suits and ties, you know, and we have guys with attache cases and women in very smart looking suits with their hair all tied back. And then we inform you that you can't borrow any more scratch. OK, uh, you're cut off. Um, and what does China do today? to try to deflect attention away from Evergrande, they declare all cryptocurrencies illegal. Okay, uh, what does that mean? Uh, what are you, you gonna tell? You gonna tell one person in California they can't do a crypto exchange transaction with someone in Oregon? I mean, who do you think you are? You guys are nothing burgers. Okay, you guys have already made crypto illegal in your country by shutting down the mining of the stuff. The reason the Chinese are freaking out about crypto is that this is, a, again, a sign of weakness and a sign of big trouble in little China. This, there's big trouble here. And what the big trouble is, is that the domestic Chinese individual, 1.3 billion of them who are dominated by these morons in uh, Beijing, these overlords who feel that they control and can control and have the right to control the thoughts, dreams, hopes, and aspirations of all 1.3 million people, these guys, these slave drivers, they have the belief that they can shut everything in. The 1.3 billion out there who are being ruled by these morons are saying, screw you. Uh, we get a shot at getting our money out of this country, our own country. We're taking it because we don't have faith in you guys. We notice what you're doing in Hong Kong. We notice that you declare a newspaper, a spy organization just like that, and you arrest everybody. Uh, you declare that uh, a student wearing a headband that is of a certain color is an agitator, and you arrest them, and all their friends 
are investigate head because they know this person. Uh, Chinese have had enough. They're fed up. It's kind of like East Germany in the 80s. Uh, all through the 1980s, the East German population have had, had it with their overlords out of Moscow to, uh, uh, to East Germany, or over, uh, dominating everything in their lives. One in seven East German citizens were spies, were informants for the secret police. One in seven East Germans were snitching on all of their relatives, their friends, their neighbors, their co-workers, everybody, and especially people they knew personally. And if they didn't snitch, and if they didn't deliver what the, the secret police wanted, these folks went to jail. They would just appear for two weeks. They would be interrogated and would be re-educated and then brought back to society. And then they would snitch again. And it would get worse and worse and worse. This is happening in China. It's been going on for decades in China. Uh, of every 10 people in China, every 20, every 100, I can guarantee you 15 to 20 are reporting to an agency of some kind in some way. And they are snitching on every Chinese national. So if you live in an apartment building in Shanghai or now Hong Kong or in Beijing or any town in China, and there are zillions of them, I can guarantee you that in your apartment building on every floor of every apartment building, when you come home at the end of the day, there's one of your apartment neighbors is looking through the little hole through the door to see what you're wearing, what you got with you, what time you came home, what time you left this morning, when you leave in the evening, when you got back, you're completely tracked. This is old school surveillance. We're not even talking about high tech surveillance where they're checking this. They're checking this too. There are others who are doing this. You are completely watched everything you do. And these folks, more and more of them are pissed off to the, to the max. They don't dare say it. So what they do is it's their actions that are louder than words. And what are Chinese uh, people doing more and more and more? They're trying to find ways to get their money out. They're trying to find ways to get their wealth out of China. They don't trust their own, their own supervisors, their own uh, leaders. They want to hold US dollars. They want to hold euros. They want to hold Japanese yen. They want to hold uh, anything that is street cred reasonable as opposed to this artificial crap called the want, because this is propped up by all kinds of artificial leveraged loans, left, right, and center. These guys are so over leveraged, the Chinese don't believe it. The Western world, those in the know, they know. 99% uh, of us on the outside, we don't care, but we have to care. We have to care because we're all tied in to the Chinese hoax that these guys are, are credible creditors, that we can trust these guys. You got to be kidding me. The last six months, the moves that the Chinese government has made in the last six months, if this isn't tipping any of you off, any of you getting a hint that these guys are as corrupt as it gets, and they're about to change the rules on everything, today was the sign of watch out. Uh, they're, now they're now calling cryptocurrency transactions, any transaction in crypto, illegal. Okay, that, that means jail time, all right? So this is going to mean that there are going to be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Chinese nationals that are gonna be offline for a while in the near future. Do not be surprised that all kinds of trumped up uh, uh, BS charges are gonna be filed against some prominent Chinese who are gonna be accused of uh, anti-national behavior, um, cooperating with foreign elements, uh, uh, traitors to their own country. Um, and they're gonna disappear for a while. They're either gonna be under house arrest, they're gonna be under full arrest, you're going to see show trials. Uh, it's all coming. And what it is, is, is an example is being shown to the 1.3 billion that are over there. This is what could happen to you if you do what these guys do in any scale whatsoever. It's a scare tactic. And what the Chinese are desperately trying to do is stop the leaks, the leaks of their capital being converted into other capital, other currency, and leaving the country digitally digitally. And this is a, a massive nightmare, and it might be too late for the Chinese government. I think it already is too late for the Chinese government. The Chinese national government has just begun to figure out in the last few months, oh my goodness, we are seeing trillions, trillions of Chinese wealth 
leaving the borders of this country through all kinds of complicated schemes and deals. And most of it is digital and you cannot recoup it. The only way you can recoup it is you make the people bring it back. And the only way you're going to make it make them bring it back as you haul them in for questioning and you keep them in the question room for you know four days until they break down and start reversing their transactions on their telephones um if that's even possible but i have a suspicion that a lot of chinese people who have um, moved their assets offshore they have moved their assets offshore and again and moved it again and again and again and again in effect wherever they sent it to it has been resent out in thousands of little pieces elsewhere all over the world and they can't bring it back and this is the problem that the chinese government is running into they are running out of foreign reserves it's it, there's a pinch there's a pinch it's not like they're broke they're not broke broke but they are feeling it and the message to their nationals to their citizens isn't working the the more these guys crack down on freedom in hong kong and other freedoms like the right to transact business you start muddling with that, you have lost the will of the people. You have lost the support. They will, on the outside, say, oh, I love you. Uh, but on the inside, they're looking for ways to get out. The problem is they don't know who to trust within the family because when they have their Friday night gathering or their Saturday gathering or whenever they have a birthday or they're celebrating an, a, a marriage, gathering of Chinese people, the problem here is the room is full of 50 people, 80 people, 100 people have come out to get together. And in that gathering, there could be anywhere from 10 to 40% snitching on everybody else to the secret police. And there's where the problem lies, that you don't trust your own family anymore. And there's the beginning of the breakdown. And in East Germany, they'd had it. It had gone too far, way over the top, and uh, all East Germans, even the snitchers, began to say, this is ridiculous. What's my upside for me snitching on my relatives? The upside is they want more. They want me to snitch more. That's the upside. There's, there's no other upside. They're threatening to put me in jail if I don't snitch. And if I do snitch, I'm supposed to snitch more or I'm going to go to jail. So there's no win here. There's no, I'm not going to be given a prime job at a, at a national company with benefits. I, I'm not inside the Communist Party. I'm not I'm not high enough in the in the ranking. I'm considered a low level snitch that is going to be ground to the ground, just going to, going to grind me down until I got nothing left to give. And then I'm going to be in jail anyway. So what's the point? And that's why the suicide rate in East Germany was the highest in the Western world in the last 10 years of the East German government's reign. Most professionals in East Germany took every chance they had to get the hell out. They would find ways to leave the country illegally and never come back. And this is happening in China in droves. There are Chinese so-called tourists who don't come back. This is going to escalate. And uh, China is unraveling. And they are now playing games like today, making crypto illegal. And that means if you are on the other side of a transaction where you're, let's say you're buying something from uh, Alibaba online. You use crypto to settle the trade, that's illegal. You use crypto to settle a trade with someone who's from China who's using someone else to use crypto to settle a trade, that's illegal. They're going to connect it and they're going to want to charge you with an illegal activity. Because see, in China, you break Chinese law, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. You're in Peoria, you're in Toledo, Ohio, and you do a crypto transaction with anyone to do with China, you're breaking Chinese law. Don't go to Hong Kong for a holiday. They're going to check your passport. <laughs> they already know your passport number. They know your passport number. Okay. They know your license number. They know who you are. All right. Don't, don't think they don't know. They know. Okay. Every government that cares knows who you are. All right. There is no hiding. Uh, we're digital, baby. We're out there and we're all available for identification. It's not like they're going to come and get you. They're not going to send an agency couple guys to render you and put a hood over your head in downtown Peoria, take you back to Hong Kong, put you on trial. No. no. But if you show up in town, if you go on one of these tours, uh, you're taking a cruise ship holiday and it happens to go through a Chinese territory, don't be surprised if, uh, you know, some people want to talk to you. Um, just just don't, don't go there. Um, the Chinese nationals out there, uh, it's scary as all get up. There are people in Canada, China, China nationals, there are people in Canada with dual citizenship, Canadian citizenship and China citizenship, who are under the threat of arrest at any time, anywhere they go, 
if Chinese agents can get their hands on them and they know it because it's happening already, has been for years. It's not a, it's not talked about. It's not promoted. This is the kind of stuff that just doesn't excite CBS News. It doesn't excite Fox. It doesn't excite CNN. You're not going to hear about it. I can just tell you that there are people who are panicking out there about the China government at all times because these guys are getting desperate and there's a reason they're getting desperate. We don't trust them anymore for paying their bills. We have a suspicion that hmm, they, we might or may not get paid on this deal. These bond deals, if they're being paid in one to Chinese nationals will be paid because they don't want to have riots in the streets. But these bond offerings and these interest payments to foreigners, European customers, North American customers, Eh, they're subject to negotiation because, um, you know, if you're a New York uh, investment house and you're owed $10 million this quarter for a bond payment and we don't pay you, wh what are you going to do about it? What, are you going to send someone to Beijing and knock on doors? <laughs> you're not getting in here. Uh, so you can be kicked around a little bit. And, and that's one way to defray and delay and defer additional capital leaving China. That's how you close in and you keep the foreign capital currency you have. You limit the amount of foreign currency uh, or currency that can leave. Uh, you, you limit your population and restrict them all kinds of ways to Sunday to not be allowed to transact foreign transactions. And this, man, this means that you close your borders off to the outside world, keep the money you have, sparingly spend money out. And what you want to do is you want to spend one, not dollars. Of course, the outside world doesn't want the one. They want dollars. <laughs> Convert your one to dollars and pay me because that's the bond issue that we signed here. These Evergrande bonds that have been negotiated were negotiated in dollars. And the uh, China uh, companies that, have these, that are owing these bonds, they have to pay American dollar currencies to pay these interest payments every quarter, every month, every six months, whatever the terms are. Usually these have been done through Shanghai and through Hong Kong because again, China wanted to show the world, well, we're a global player. We should be taken seriously as a global player. We're the number two economy in the world, soon to be the number one economy in the world if we have our way because we're, you know, we, we're China, we're gonna be number one. Well, in order to be uh, uh, taken seriously by the outside world, you gotta pay your bills on time and if you guys can't even handle an $80 million interest payment on a, on a domestically based in, in, in real estate uh, developing type company, developer company, uh, that to me is a sign of real trouble. <laughs> I can understand the Chinese government having problems covering hundreds of billions of dollars in interest payments on, on you know, massive debt. But this, this is chump change for the China government, for the Chinese economy. The theory is that Evergrande, as big as they are, and as, as, you know, as successful as they've been and as many projects as they've done, it's still just a tiny little fraction of what China is all about. But yet this is such a big deal. Uh, they, can't, they can't make the payments. And the Chinese are warning their regional, um, uh, I'm not sure who these guys are, henchmen? I don't know what to call them. They say officials, but I think it's their, their bribe masters, you know, the guys who are, who are supposed to get money and then divvy it out to all their pals. They're warning these guys that Ever, Evergrande may not be able to make payments. So it's kind of like the Godfather telling all of his associates, uh, yeah, the, one of our best, uh, you know, one of our best uh, gambling houses over here is having cash flow troubles. They may, may not be making their payments this month, but don't knock them off. Uh, I'm talking to them. I Quiet. Um, and eventually, you know, deal is made and cash flows and are done and the VIG is paid and everything is cool again as long as you are on time. In China, of course, it's, it's considered more like, well, it's banking interests, uh, you know. But uh, fear not, people. Um, don't be fooled. Don't be, don't be b d misled here. Um, this, this black hole of the Chinese government is so mysterious in one way and in another way. It is completely transparent. Uh, uh, China exists just like any other third world country exists. You have got to bribe the top officials of every city, of every region to keep the business going. And uh, if you do that, they can all pay their bribes to all their subject, subjects below them. It's just one big happy crime family. And uh, here we are on the outside looking in. And I just shake my head and go, I don't know why any banker wants to deal with these guys. I, I don't understand how JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs wants anything to do with these people. One iota of it. Um, yeah, I get it. You can buy Chinese goods at really cheap prices. Guess who makes those cheap products for really cheap prices? Uh, there are the 
the typical law-abiding Chinese citizen. Yep. And then there's the political prisoners that are, uh, you know, in various regions of China that we never hear about. Uh, millions of them that are producing product for two pennies a day and pay and a bowl of rice. And they have no rights. And uh, they're in jail for 17 years for uh, being a foreign agitator. Um, hey, uh, get with it, people. Uh, we're enjoying the, the lifestyle we have on the backs of others. And in certain third world countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh and uh, others, there are millions of, of, of people who go to work in clothing manufacturing factories to produce our t-shirts, to produce our pants, to produce our socks, to produce our underwear, to produce our glasses, our frames, whatever, and it's slave labor. And we actually do know that. We just don't admit it in North America. We just kind of look the other way. We go to the dollar store and go, oh, look at the deals at the dollar store. Well, how do you think we get these deals at the dollar store? We're savvy shoppers? No, we are not savvy shoppers. We are fat, lazy people in North America. We're fat, we're lazy, and we have the currency of choice. We're just lucky that we are where we are and we can buy cheap crap at a dollar store made overseas by victims of third world dictators. Get with the program if you don't know what's going on. I hate to be such a downer, but this is the world in which we live. And why would a North American company be stupid enough to open up a factory in a very highly regulated uh, work environment where workers have to be treated with full respect, full benefits, full pay, full holidays, full medical, when over here we can basically contract a factory owner to make these, because this is low tech stuff, whatever these blank t-shirts are. We can contract people to make these items in a third world and we don't have to know. We, we have a barrier here. There's this, there's this, this, this thing. I don't know what's going on over there. I'm not, I can't see it. I'm just dealing with the guy. I'm dealing with this company that uh, delivers these shirts in containers to the port of Los Angeles on, on, cruise, on big uh, container ships. I don't have to worry about how they treat their employees, the fact that they're in five, eight, ten story tall buildings with locked doors uh, for fire escapes so that they work their full 14 hour shifts. They have to make so many pieces an hour or they're fired on the spot and they're getting their 50 cents a day in wages, 80 cents a day, two bucks a day, whatever the hell it is. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is because I want to be able to sell this T-shirt at Michael's respected retailer in the United States and Canada. I want to be able to sell this thing for six bucks at Michael's. I want to be able to sell this t-shirt at Costco, maybe with a little design on it over here for $9.99 at Costco, because that's what I need to do. I have to deliver to Walmart. These guys in, in Missouri, I've got to come to Walmart with an offer to be able to deliver to these guys 500,000 t-shirts every month in different colors and sizes and styles or 2 million a month, whatever the number is, at $4.99 cost because they're going out at $6.99 in Walmart. I have to deliver this. The only way I can deliver that deal is if I get these made in Myanmar, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, the third world of the third world of the lowest of the lowest race to the bottom guys. It used to be China. It used to be Indonesia. It used to be other places. It goes around and around and around. And I don't have to worry about the factory and I have to worry about working conditions. I have to worry about human rights. I'm just getting in containers in Los Angeles and I'm delivering them like I'm supposed to. And we're making 50 cents a shirt, net, 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 net. And that's the game that we're playing. And we may be public companies and we may be privately run companies or we're limited partnerships that are based in Panama or we're limited partnerships that are based out of the Cayman Islands or Switzerland or non-tax paying other jurisdictions. And we have various divisions that do the ordering, the buying, the selling, the distribution. But when it comes to the United States of America, the product lands as an American type product distributed by an American type company and everybody's happy and no one investigates anything. And you and I can go to call, go, go to Walmart, go to Costco, go to Target, go to anywhere we want or online. And we can pick these up for pennies on the dollar. It 
compared to if we had these made in Tennessee or in Kentucky or Indiana or Ohio or Pennsylvania or New York or California, where we would be paying $24.95 a t-shirt. Now, you're paying $24.95 for a t-shirt in certain stores, and the t-shirts are made for 50 cents a piece. Yeah, that's right. That's how it works. You go to a concert of your favorite artist, and you buy one of their t-shirts for 20 bucks, $25 at the concert, I can tell you the shirt was 50 cents, 75 cents, a buck to make an import, then redistribute and redistribute and redistribute until you pay 25 bucks a shirt. The arena that you bought it in, they're getting 10% off the top, if not 20% off the top as a rent to the artist. So they're getting five bucks on the $25 shirt, leaves $20. The uh, promoters, the distributors, everyone, they're getting their 75%. The artist is getting five bucks a shirt. So you're paying $25 and your stage person up there is getting five bucks. And they're dividing that in their corporation to handle it all. And the guy playing the guitar, he's getting 15, 20 cents a shirt net net in his pocket. Got that $25 came out of your pocket to start the whole ball rolling. And the person who made the shirt, they're getting 50 cents a day to survive. And there you go. Welcome to the world in which we live. China lives off of this stuff. China has been incredibly successful doing this game. The problem now is that they have so dominated their own currency, their own internal market, they have had to find ways to keep their population busy working so they don't protest in the streets or they don't silently uh, start not delivering uh, production and, and productivity. And what the way you do that is you keep your population working through artificial promotional uh, uh, business uh, moves. And so you build infrastructure where it's not needed yet. You build future cities now. I mean, they are building cities of 5 million people where no one is living there yet. Can you imagine this? You're not going to see the Western press cover it. Why? They're not allowed in there. Why are they not allowed in there? Because if you did allow 60 minutes in there, they'd break it all down and they tell us the truth of what's really going on. These guys are building a city for 5 million people and there's nobody here. Why would you do that? There's only one reason you do that because it employs millions and millions of people for decades, for years, to build out highways, sewers, power lines, natural gas line, all of the uh, 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 fire hydrants, the, uh, the fire stations, police stations, uh, an entire city. Think about it. Every single building, street, brick, piece of concrete, everything to build out an entire city is done. And it's all paid for by the state and the state allows companies to do the building and these companies are allowed to issue bonds to raise the money to build the structure and the domestic Chinese um, uh, investor is buying mutual funds in these different entities including ETFs, domestic and ETFs who are investing in these companies who are building these structures because everyone believes that well sooner or later there's going to be five million people living there and everybody has to buy it all they, they they every condo is going to be bought by somebody every store is going to be bought by some entrepreneur because why wouldn't an entrepreneur buy a corner store to sell uh, uh, slushies and 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 newspapers and cigarettes to the five million people who live around of course it makes sense the problem is that there's nobody there yet they were supposed to be there in 2015 and it didn't happen until 2018 that the first 500,000 uh, people showed up and then 5,000 people and 50,000 people. It took 10 years to fill out the 5 million city city, but it was built in 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And there are others behind it being done everywhere. We're talking 1.3 billion people to bring up into a, some kind of artificial middle class this country is over leveraged all over the place. There are bonds everywhere that have to be paid every month. And it's all a pyramid scheme on top of, on top of, on top of. And the beginning, the first little bruise in the apple showed up a few months ago where, oh, they're having trouble making bond payments on a couple of bonds. And oh, this evergreen, ever, evergrind thing is starting to show up. Oh. Crypto is being illegal. It's illegal to mine crypto. Oh, it's illegal for Chinese banks to conduct transactions in crypto. They're no longer allowed to do it. Oh, all crypto transactions are now illegal. Oh, how much further does it go? I'll show you. It'll go all the way to stock trading. It'll go all the way to 
every transaction there is, it'll be all government approved or not done whatsoever. And that leads us to where we are. Why should you care about this old man ranting about China all the time? I know. I keep bringing it up every couple of days. And you're asking me, why do you keep talking about this? Why are you talking about You were talking about this in the summertime. Nobody was talking about it then. Now everyone's talking about it. And now you're going on even further. You're going beyond Evergrande. You're going beyond the, the, the what everyone is talking about. Why do you keep doing this? Because I'm telling you, kids... This is the beginning of a serious problem with respect to liquidity, international liquidity. We have got problems. There are, I told you the other day, I don't know how many thousands of hedge funds there are in the world, which control up towards a $4 trillion. And that the uh, derivative market that, that clears these derivative trades is London. That's the headquarters of derivative trading globally. And it's 310 to $320 trillion a year of transactions being done. If, even if 1% of all derivative trading is conducted by Chinese linked anything through hedge funds, through pension funds, mutual funds, through investments in Chinese, whatever, if 1% of the world's derivative trading is done through anything in China, we are in for a serious crash because <laughs> derivatives are so leveraged, uber leveraged. It, 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 it's unspeakable. If you've, you, I know many of you have watched The Big Short and you've enjoyed it. You got to watch it again and you've got to watch it again. You have to watch Margin Call, the show. These are fictional movies uh, on some realistic stuff, especially short, uh, uh, especially the, uh, the, uh, the uh, the 2007 crash you have to watch this again the amount of leverage that is being wagered the amount of money is being wagered on small transactions relatively small transactions 10 million dollar deal between company one and company two is now a 10 billion dollar wager when you factor it all out it, it is just stunning uh it, it is scary stunning and in london and in the derivatives business volume is everything if you can take a $1 billion business deal and turn that into $500 billion of bets that the deal will go through, the $500 billion in wagers being done, that's where the money is. It's the handling of the money between buyers and seller gamblers back and forth. Everyone, Every bank gets a little slip sliver, maybe one one hundredth of a percentage point on this deal, this deal, this deal. It's happening all through computer. It's happening at light speed. It is, it is uncalculable to a human being to do in a manual way. But if 1% of this $300 trillion, $400 whatever this number is, 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 is in trouble, we're talking about 1% leverage to the point of 500 to 1,000 times. We're talking about hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars that could be in default. And... Um, this will eventually come out and it'll get to the point where a lot of betters, wagerers out there, players out there, will not be interested in any derivative trading that has anything to do with the Chinese yuan, the Chinese government, the Chinese, a Chinese business, a, 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 a futures contract to do with anything to do with iron ore, coal, uh, anything Chinese are using. There will be players who will go, I'm not interested in this area. I'm, I want to stay away from that entire region. This is contagion of uh, epic proportions that you and I and I cannot easily explain in plain English to you, but I'm warning you and I'm telling you that uh, this is a big problem. And uh, unfortunately, uh, when it comes right down to it, the problem is there. The problem will not go away because at the end of the day, when it comes to any kind of dictatorship, any kind of communist type uh, country, you don't have accountability. You can't place accountability. Uh, no foreign court can arrest a whole bunch of Chinese officials for manipulating their currency or um, jailing innocent Chinese people and calling them spies. There is no way to stop this uh, because they're too big. Uh, they've got nuclear weapons. So, you know, you're not going to bomb them to death. You're not going to bomb them out of existence. You have to just cut them off. And, and what you do is, again, 
the gentlemen in suits and the women in the very smart uh, lawyer outfit uh, with their hair pulled back will, with their attache cases, uh, uh, meeting after meeting after meeting, whether it's virtual or in reality or what have you, will slowly but surely say to their Chinese counterparts, uh, yeah, we can't, we can't uh, help you with that bond deal. Uh, we can't help you with that, uh, with that refinancing deal. Uh, yeah, we can't, uh, we can't offer insurance uh, t- for you on that shipment uh, uh, of containers going from uh, sh- Shanghai to Los Angeles. Uh, we, we can't, we can't guarantee it. We can't, we can't uh, do it uh, because uh, we're worried about. Uh, it's not us, you know. We, we like you guys. It's my customer. Uh, they, they don't trust you. Uh, we don't trust you, and we don't trust the insurance company that's backing you up because. <laughs> They don't pay either. Uh, you seem to have these uh, little scenarios where you just make stuff illegal, and uh, we just we don't we don't trust companies that we don't trust countries that do that. And so we're just gonna you know we're just gonna pass, and maybe you can go to somebody else, and they'll go to someone else, and maybe they'll take the deal, maybe not. It gets to the point where more and more a- entities uh, just don't want to do business with China. They just don't want to do business with anything related with China because they don't trust them. Because Chinese have this thing about making laws up out of nowhere that says, oh, this is illegal and this is foreign interference. This is spying. This is, uh, you know, this is trade. Anyone in China doing this business is a traitor to the country. And we have to arrest them. Uh, Westerners kind of go, we're the left. We're left holding the bag all the time. We're the guys out the money uh, because our business guys in China don't exist anymore. They're, I, we can't find them. Uh, they are, uh, their phones, no one answers their phones anymore. Um, we just don't know where these guys are. And well, they've been arrested and they're, you know, they're being uh, re-educated to, you know, to, to do business in another way. Um, I don't trust a company like that, a government like that. That's why East Germany could never get on the, on the ground with the Western world. They, East Germany could never get their economy going. Yet East German people honest as the day is long, hardworking like you can't believe, very educated, very smart, very eager to build their lifestyle. East German people were, were the best of the best when it came to the East um, to do business with for, for dependability. Oh, fantastic. They always showed up at work on time. They, they put in their 40-hour shifts. They, they got two weeks holiday. They took two weeks holiday. Uh, you could count on East German uh, people to deliver. The problem was that their overlords were crooks. <laughs> they were skimming off the top because they had to pay off Russia. They had to pay off the, the Moscovitz for, their, for, for the right to be in existence. And so the payoffs were so high that the East Germans got nothing of the upside, they got one tenth of the upside that the West Germans had. Uh, if you if you were visiting Germany in 1975 or 1985, you went to West Germany, you went to East Germany, you spent a week in each uh, half. You noticed that the West Germans had the latest cars. Their cars were less than three years old because in Germany it was almost impossible to license and insure a five-year-old car or older unless it was a collectible because of insurance and because of reliability and and, and, and emission standards. You, you couldn't drive an eight-year-old Volkswagen in Germany. These cars were exported to third world countries out of Germany. They were, they were very smart how they dealt with it. Um, every West German had the latest television set. West Germans had the, the first cell phones. They had the first computers. They, they had the Western fashions. Billy Joel would come to Frankfurt, but he wouldn't go to, uh, go, wouldn't go to East Germany for a concert. Are you kidding me? They, they can't pay him. Um, the radio, the televisions, uh, the shows, uh, the entertainment, um, completely different. The education system in, in from grades, you know, kindergarten to high school, what, what West German kids learn versus what East German kids learn, totally different. I mean, East Germany, it was all about how great East Germany is. In West Germany, it's how the world works. Uh, uh, you know, so totally different cultures. And yet the, the country that we're talking about 14 million people in East Germany, we're talking about 20, 30, 40 million people in, in West Germany. One was prosperous as all get up. The other one was destitute. And eventually the 14 million East Germans said, enough is enough. We're not doing this anymore. We're not playing this game anymore. I'm just, uh, I'm going to phone in sick today. I'm going to work at half capacity because I'm just unmotivated. Because no matter how hard I work, I will not get a raise. It won't get better for me. It won't get better for my kids. They promised me from 1946 
right up to 1985, 89, how great East Germany was and was going to be. And the population of East Germany finally figured out they're lying to us. <laughs> they knew they were lying to them in the 60s, but it just wouldn't stop. And in China, they're figuring it out too because the genie's out of the bottle. Too many Chinese nationals know what's going on outside of China. And they're not benefiting like other countries' nationals are benefiting. And they're going, you're telling us how great we are, China. You're telling how great we're going to be. Uh, we're doing all these parades on television of these, these military parades. And everything's great. And our, and our president has decided to be president for life. Isn't that a dictatorship? What happened to elections? What's with this guy? Who are, who are these guys? And now he's handpicking the successors. I thought we, the Chinese people, were picking our successors. No. You see, in a dictatorship, it doesn't work that way. And they're figuring it out. And they're going, we got to get our money out. We got it. You know, assets that we have are worthless because when the crash comes, there will be an economic crash in China. We got to have something that we can buy bread with. We we have to have something to buy rice with. And the yuan is useless because in Venezuela, the bovier is useless. Uh, so we got to have hard currency to to survive on. And maybe it's a good idea to send the kids on a holiday to Britain and to Canada, to the United States, to to France, to to Italy, just. And, and don't have them come home. Maybe we should start doing that. Get our kids out. Get our grandkids out. Get out. And the Chinese authorities know that. They, they know that this, this is the next inevitable thing. The first thing to go is, is the money. The second thing to go is the motivation. The third thing to go are, are the people. And you clamp down, you clamp down, and you clamp down. And that's what the East Germans desperately tried to do in the last five years of their reign. And it didn't work anymore. And then it didn't work in Hungary, and it didn't work in Romania, and it didn't work. All Eastern Bloc countries collapsed under the weight of themselves eventually. China right now, that's the big one. And everyone's been wondering, how is it that these guys keep surviving? How, how is it that these people keep tolerating this shit? How do they keep taking this bullshit from these guys? Why? Why, Why do they do that? Because they're worried about being arrested in the middle of the night by the secret police. Because their neighbor... Uh, over here in the apartment next door. Remember, we're talking about 500 square foot apartments, okay? Paper thin walls, all right? Uh, the neighbor's been snitching to the secret police about these people here are looking to move all their money offshore in crypto. They're looking to, uh, you know, find ways to get money out. They're, they're literally, uh, you know, sending one, one of their family members out to Disney World in France to go on a holiday, but sewn into their jacket is are all their diamonds and all of their valuables so that when they get there, they'll pawn that off for U.S. dollars, get a safety deposit box at a Paris bank, and just leave the money there. They are hearing that through the neighbors. They're, they're snitching, and these people never make it to the airport. They, they never get, they get stopped on the way to the airport, and then they're frisked, and they find all this stuff, and they're arrested for anti-China activities. Uh, this is foreign interference. You're a spy. You're, you're, no, you're, you're a traitor to the country. And they're gone, and the, the assets are gone. And now all family members are investigative who, who collaborated with this guy. Uh, this is the terror, the terror of being in China as a Chinese person. Call me crazy. Uh, hey, it's okay. Bruce doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just spouting off. He's just an old guy. You know, these old people, they don't know what they're doing. It never happens. It's a conspiracy theory. There's nothing there. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Suit yourself. Um, you want to move to China right now? Yeah, really? Uh, yeah, give it a give it a break. I don't know. There it is. Um, there's the there's the deal. Welcome to the show this morning, everybody. Um, sometimes this old man just has to talk to you about what the heck is going on out there, and it ain't pretty. Um, be lucky. Be grateful where you are. Um, if you have freedoms, uh, great. Uh, but do not for a minute think that they are ingrained in your future. Uh, your freedoms can be taken away from you at a moment's notice under any excuse that your leaders come up with. And whether it's a, an insurrection act or it's a Patriot Act or whether it's a War Measures Act in Canada, over the years, there, there have been all kinds of instances where Western governments also crack down on their own citizens for national security purposes. Um, it is what it is. But uh, there are economic scenarios that are happening out there. And we have a 165 point drop on Dow. We have a 25 point drop on S&P. We have a 115 point drop on NASDAQ. And it may or may not be related to China, everything I've just said. It may or may not have anything to do with that. It may have everything to do with the fact that eh, there's a couple more sellers this morning than buyers, but there's so much cash being pumped into the system by the Fed to keep you focused on being greedy 
uh, with your futures. Um, the United States government is like any other government. The Canadian government is like any other government. It would be better for the population to focus on their house prices, their jobs, their car payments, their student loans, getting their kids through school, getting the grand grandkids, keeping them healthy, keep people worrying about their domestic situation and keeping everything going, than to worry about the solvency of our country or the security of our world or what's happening elsewhere. And so as long as it's better where you are, you're not going to worry about what it's like elsewhere. And that's great. Go to the dollar store, pick up a $5 t-shirt, put a design on it, and enjoy your life. That is the simplified version of what, how to keep everything cool. Uh, <coughs> and as long as it works, it works. And so there you have it. And if we can tolerate a 167 point drop today, and it's not a big deal, and it isn't, okay, great, we'll go from there. Uh, welcome to the channel. <laughs> welcome to Uncle Bruce's crazy rant about what's happening in the world out there. It's just my opinion, just my thoughts. You can make up your own thoughts, your own opinion on what you think is real and what is not. Totally up to you. But uh, boy, do I see crap happening over there. Yes, I do. And I see evidence of cracks forming. And I see the rot from that apple coming out. It is ugly. And it's been ugly for years. Uh, but a lot of folks just look the other way because my, my check didn't bounce. Uh, I go to the ATM machine, I put the card in, I want 100 bucks, I get $100. I use my debit card at the Costco gas bar, I get gas. What's the problem? Everything's fine. Because in life, when asked, uh, I, I can't remember which politician was asked, but there are every president who gets elected and every president that doesn't get elected, they have their advisors. And their top advisors tell every single candidate in every case, whether you're running for president, you're running for a Senate seat, you're running for Congress, you're running for mayor, you're running for dog catcher, uh, across America, across Canada, uh, Britain, France, every country in the world, wherever you're running for office, the bottom line is politics is local. That's the bottom line. Politics is local. So if you're running for president someday, if any of you out there are thinking of running for president someday, and you come into good old Indiana, you better know what Indianans are thinking about. And if you're heading over to Ohio, you better understand what Ohioans are thinking about. Because if not, you're out of touch. We don't care you know what's happening in Berlin. We don't care that you know what's happening in Beijing. We don't care you know what's happening in Rio de Janeiro. We want to know if you know what's happening in Columbus, Ohio right now, at the university, there's some labor problems. Or Cincinnati, there's some issues over there. Or in Salt Lake City, we have issues over there. When you come to our town, you better know the local politics because all politics is local. And if the population at large feels that you know what I care about and you care what I care about, I'm going to give you my vote. And if you don't, if you're a, some kind of grandiose uh, international whatever wannabe, uh, you're too elitist for me. I'm going to vote for the guy who gives who gives a crap about my needs. Welcome Donald Trump in 2016. Everyone felt that he cared about what they cared about. Hillary Clinton, too elitist, not going to go there. And so there's how you win the election. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are to another day of fun, fun, fun till daddy takes the T-bird away. Are we going to make money today? I hope so. Uh, we're gonna have a down day today. I don't know. It, it doesn't look like a serious issue, uh, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you're watching this guy and you're listening to what I'm talking to you about with respect to your trades and how to handle these markets, down days are opportunities to make money, especially those of you who are writing call contracts. If you are writing call contracts, you welcome down days. On Fridays, you really welcome down days on Fridays. Th these are the best days of the week. A down day on a Friday is a perfect day when it comes to option writing because a lot of you have options expiring today. A lot of you have options expiring next week and the week after. And today might be the day that you're going to buy back calls that you wrote a long time ago. 
uh, for much higher prices at much lower prices. Today is cash in day. Is this is a good day? This is the day where you let options expire worthless if that's what you want to do. Or this is the day where you buy them back for 15, 20 cents, 30 cents, and write new contracts for three bucks, six bucks, nine bucks, 12 bucks, depending how far out you go. Oh, this is a good day. And those of you who are you're not sure what's going to happen. Today might be a, a dip day. It might be a bargain day for some of those stocks out there you like. The stocks you've been waiting to come off or finally coming off, you're getting in. Uh, yes, it is. This is the day where you write put contracts. This is the day you write cash secured put contracts on dips. This is exactly when you make your moves. It's a good time. Uh, where the rest of the warm market frets and gets all nervous and jittery about down days, you guys are getting, you're rubbing your hands together going, oh, it's going to be a good day today. Now, mama, they're coming back to mama now. This is what I want to see. Once you become that kind of a trader, once you become that kind of an investor, you're going to make a lot of money in this market because you are taking this market by the, you know what, and you are making it your slave. <laughs> There's a B word. Uh, you're making this market your little toy. And that is where you're in charge of your destiny. Uh, when you let the market dominate you, you're in trouble. It, it's where you dominate the market. You call the shot. You make the rules. You decide when to uh, uh, write a call option, when to buy a call option, when to roll over a contract. You are in charge, always in control. And this is where you beat way more than half the other players out there. Because there are people out there... Uh, zillions of them playing the market. You only have to be smarter than half of them. And by doing what you're doing with yours truly here, learning how to do the options side of things, writing call options, writing put options, um, I think you're in the top 10%. You might be in the top 5%. And uh, I don't care if you have a $500 account, $5,000 account, $50,000, $500,000, $5 million, $50 million, you're going to make money. And that's why we're here. I hope that's why we're here. Uh, other than the banter and the happy times, uh, <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for hanging around and joining me today. Uh, we're opening in, I think, three minutes. Um, and let's hope you all get richer today because that is what it's all about. Those of you who are uh, members of this channel, um, you know it. You know, I don't even have to say it, but I do say it every day. You are the backbone of this channel's existence. I thank all of you who are members of this channel. You're, you're, you're making your contribution every month to YouTube. Uh, to be here, um, it is uh, it is the reason I'm still here. Uh, it, the amount of haters that are out there, the absolute limitless numbers of haters that are out there would have driven this channel off the air months ago um, because uh, there are people who do not want to know what anyone else thinks other than what they think I should think. And uh, uh, there are YouTubers out there that will satisfy these people's needs, wants, and desires. And I say, God bless everyone for it. Uh, everyone's success on YouTube is great in my book. Fantastic, whatever platform you're using. Um, I just kind of spew off the, off the cuff what I think is going on in plain English. And, and you don't have to agree with me. It's okay. Uh, but if you're a member of this channel, you're supporting free speech. You're supporting an open, an open book of ideas. And you're, you're part of the family here where we talk to each other about what's going on. And, uh, you know, whether we're right or not, we're allowed to have that uh, opinion uh, where others don't feel we have the right to have that opinion. So there you go. Thank you, members, for supporting free speech and uh, allowing us to have an open exchange about what's going on. Those of you who are members, again, thank you. If you're a subscriber of this channel but you're not a member, thank you for that, too. Uh, if you uh, would uh, please consider becoming a member of this channel, I would really appreciate it. We love to have you uh, during market hours. I try to set the uh, the uh, s the settings in such a way that members only can make comments to us uh, because I'm trying to control uh, you know certain uh, crazies out there who uh, will take advantage of uh, uh, you know trying to just bully around in here and and uh, run amok. Um, again, thank you everybody uh, for being part of this uh, this part of this channel. And as members, you guys rock. Uh, Jen and I, we love you, and uh, we so appreciate uh, that you're here with us. It is fantastic. We have 258 thumbs ups uh, after the one-hour rant. That's not bad. I mean, you know, usually I, maybe not that good. I appreciate if you can give a thumbs ups to this show right away. 
Uh, if you're happy with how it's going and hoping for a good day, uh, the more thumbs ups we get early, the more momentum this show will get in YouTube. More people will be referred to us. And it's a miracle. It's miraculous to me how many people send me private emails and say, I found you last week. I found you three weeks ago. A friend of mine told me about you. Um, I never knew you were on YouTube. I can't believe you've been on YouTube live since uh, January. And I, I, ne I never knew. I, I never heard of you before. I've been watching so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and, -so and I'm losing my butt. I'm starting to watch you the last two weeks. I'm making all kinds of money. I can't believe it. Uh, I, 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 how is it that you're not more famous? Um, you know, I don't promote myself that much. I'm here almost five hours a day live on the air. I haven't got time to promote myself. I ain't got time to hire people to promote me. I, I, I'm a one-man crew with my with my Jennifer Aniston look-alike wife. I'm doing the best I can with what I have. And uh, those of you who are putting the word out that, hey, hang out with Uncle Bruce a while. You can watch him for free. You don't have to pay anything to watch this guy. Uh, if you want to make a comment, you can always send him a super chat for a couple of bucks and make a comment, sure. Uh, or you can become a member and uh, and comment all you want and use those incredible emojis that he's put together, professionally made, top-notch emojis, including the neat emoji from uh, <laughs> Monty Python's Monty Python world. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you who are here, and I appreciate it uh, that you're <laughs> with us. Hopefully, you'll all make a big pile of money today, and uh, soon your wardrobe will start reflecting the kind of money that, <coughs> that you're making, the kind of uh, look that you know shows and says, I got it all, baby. I know what I'm doing. I'm the guy. I'm the man. I'm the woman. Just get out of my way, uh, peons. Uh, I'm making the big bucks here. Oh, look at look at how I dress there. I got it going on. Someday, someday. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, then you can go out uh, after the after the hours and say, "I'm the king of the world, baby. Give me a beer." Yeah, you can let your you let it hang out there, and uh, you know your your uh, better half will look at you and say, "You are such a." Oh, maybe you're not that. Uh, you know, um, and you tell your wife, uh, hey, I've been watching Uncle Bruce and we've been having a good time, making all kinds of money, baby. I'm going to keep you in the diamonds. And she's going to go, yeah, I like diamonds. This is good stuff. Anyway, I do the best I can with what I got. Uh, thank you, everybody, for <laughs> being here. Uh, thank you for enjoying my highly produced, expensive show uh, where I pull out all the tricks when it comes to special effects. It's all for you uh, right now from a secret location in Calgary, Alberta, where nobody knows where we are uh, because no one should know where we are. We don't want knocking on our door in the middle of the night going, hey, you're under arrest for being a wise ass. Uh, welcome, one and all. We're open. Two minutes ago, we started trading. I'm sure Larry Titus gave me the bells. Uh, Larry, did you hit the bells a couple of minutes ago? Uh, th he's giving me the thumbs up. So, uh, Larry, how you doing, buddy? There we go. Larry, always I can count on you, buddy. Thanks, man. We're open. We're trading. Well, let, let's see if anything's going to go up today or is everything going down today. I don't know what's going to do. We're, we're here. We're, we're, we're waiting to see. Uh, I'm looking at Rocket Lab right now, and it looks like it's up four cents a share. Uh, from, from what I can tell you, it looks like Rocket Lab is up four cents a share. So we'll take that as a good sign right off the get-go, uh, considering the Dow right now is down, what is it, 144? I'm um, just rearranging my big SI pad here. So, right now, folks, hang on with me a little bit. Yeah, we're down 146 on the Dow, down 22 on S&P. We're down 111 on NASDAQ. That's kind of where we were on the pre-market. Crude is down 28 cents. Now that's where that's at. Rocket Lab right now, uh, up two cents to 14.16. SoFi showing 17.01 at the moment. Low of 16.80. Now 17.01 down 13 cents. Now 16.99 down 15 cents. 1 million traded. Uh, GameStop is showing 190.58 right now, down 65 cents on 50,000. First trades here on Matterport looks like 23.18 or so, uh, down 11 maybe, 23.12, 188,000. Very quiet, uh, very quiet here. Um, um, we'll wait as uh, we'll wait a few more minutes for these of really more detailed quotes, but this is early uh, first trades. Uh, I've got ME at 908 down 12 cents. I've got Smart Rent down 39 to 1302. I have Spire at 1528 up 60 cents. Giddy up, baby. Here we go on Spire. 55,900 volume up 55 cents a share. 
that's a thousand a penny every thousand shares go figure uh trade millions go um atip up eight cents to 358 six at 940 down 24 cents amc down 26 28 cents now 39.70 seems to be under the 40 mark at the moment robin hood down a buck at 44.94 uh vanic vectors down 229 uh home depot up 12 cents ibm up a buck here 137.80 the Dow now showing down only 12 points. Uh, that is, uh, is that real uh, or am I dreaming? Let me take a look at a refresh over here. Yeah, it looks like we've really popped up here. Um, and it looks like, uh, looks like the Dow is now uh, down 18 uh, where it was down 140 like two minutes ago. So a lot of Dow issues are obviously opening up and they're you know, moving up the Dow. Microsoft down a dollar 40, unfortunately, at 298. Uh, Apple off 94 cents. Um, Tesla down 489, Bed Bath and Beyond down a dollar, BlackBerry down 35 cents, Royal Caribbean up a buck 65 to 89.81. Unbelievable! This stock is not worth 40 dollars. Uh, Goldman up 26 cents to 392. This is a future 700 dollar stock in the not too distant future. Uh, get your options in there. Uh, Amazon down 14 bucks, Facebook down two bucks, uh, Google down nine, uh, JP Morgan up 85 cents. We've got Cisco up down 23. Um, not much else to talk about here. It, it's again a, a, a wishy-washy opening. The Dow now only down five points. This pre-market, the whole pre-market, we were down 150 all morning. 140, 150, 140, 150. We're down seven now on the Dow in the real market with everyone playing at the same time. Interesting. S and P down seven points. Nasdaq down 78. We are uh, really seeing a difference here. Uh, Costco, by the way, is rationing toilet paper. Uh, and paper towel, like paper towels again, due to the the, the Delta variant. Hello, uh, this uh, so-called virus that doesn't exist in some people's minds. Why is it that toilet paper is in short supply at Costco? Gee, I wonder why. Hmm, could it be people are panicking? Could it be? Uh, maybe. Lorraine, thank you so much for joining this channel as a new member. I, I try to shout out as best I can every time I see a member pop in here. It's not easy uh, sometimes with some of the comments going through so many of them but thank you lorraine for popping in i have a, a high number of female viewers here um this is one of the at least i hope so uh, i'm hoping that a lot of the female viewers get the vibe that you are welcome here uh that the females of the world are welcome at this channel this is not a men's only club uh we try to i, I try desperately to keep the comments pg rated um and again, uh, I know that a lot of you at home who watch me, you watch me on the big TV that you have, and you have kids around. And uh, I'm aware of that. I, I try as best I can to behave myself, try to behave my crowd as best I can. Uh, and I thank all of you for your faith in this channel um, and in this uh, family of ours uh, as members. Thank you. Um, please consider becoming a, a member as well and help this channel grow its uh, street cred uh, thank you and again thumbs ups really help they really do they're free to hand out they make a difference on the youtube analytics and uh, it doesn't matter if i only get 300 thumbs ups it's a question of how many are watching versus how many thumbs ups this guy gets how many comments this guy gets uh, how much interaction there is with this guy it's unbelievable for every viewer there's this much going on they they measure this on a per viewer basis and that's how they promote channels and that's why it is really important that we get thumbs ups as quick as we can, as many as we can. And I thank you all for helping out. Um, let me just take a look here. Uh, uh, apparently, the, the, the bulletin here, Cyber Ninjas Review widens the Biden victory uh, margin over Trump in Arizona. These are the, the, the so-called, uh, you know, rechecking the votes from last November. Um, Apparently, the Biden victory was even larger than previously thought. So the the Trump team is obviously you know, going to call this all fake news and all that. But hey, interesting. Um, and um, um, another headline, House Democrats aim to spend $4 billion on reconnecting communities severed by highways. Because there are some communities that are just sliced in half. Uh, interesting. Um, and uh, what's going on here? Uh, just all, there's all kinds of headlines coming out right now. We're down 18 on the Dow, uh, down four on S&P, Nasdaq down 64. The China thing is is really being talked about 
on a lot of the networks right now all morning. Uh, we'll see what's going on there. Um, anyway, there it is. Uh, Liz says, all right, ATIP average is now 452 euros instead of 9 euros. Thanks, payday. I'll just eat some old bread this month, and I'll, I got myself a nice low average. Giddy up. Um, and uh, you know what, Bruce? I, I made three trips through Costco yesterday, and I'm good on toilet paper right now. There you go. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you, you go to Costco, buy a bunch of toilet paper, and then knock on doors in your neighborhood and, and sell off six packs for p twice what you paid for it. You make a little money that way. Um, you know, you pick up 5,000 rolls of toilet paper and flip it for double the price and make some extra cash. Uh, you know, it's the American way. Uh, buy low, sell high. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Larry, <laughs> I could just override it. And the New York Stock Exchange become the official opening bell. They can copy me. Uh, there you go. Uh, what can I say? Oh, man. Uh, having fun here. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. Um, you know, uh, uh, Aaron says, uh, you've been mentioning China for ages, Bruce, but said no crash was coming in the market. Now you think there is. Do you mean Chinese markets only or U.S. too? Uh, I, I'm talking about the possibility of uh, currency issues, futures, derivatives, um, not necessarily stock on a, on, a, on a retail level, not really. Uh, more about, uh, uh, you know, for China, it might be a problem, uh, especially uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, the hired guns at the Communist Party who are supposed to keep this game going, the shell game going. These guys are going to, they're finding it tougher now already. Uh, they're already finding it tougher. Every time their overlords in Beijing outlaw gaming, outlaw uh, education stocks, outlaw, uh, like make it impossible for Chinese companies listed in New York to, to, uh, to adhere to New York exchange rules. These guys who are running the currency markets, bond markets, uh, all the exchanges, they're just going, guys, shut up. Stop doing that. Uh, of course, they can't say it. They're, they're thinking it, but they can't say it because, you know, they don't want to go to jail. Uh, but they're going, you guys in Beijing, you, you get over this stuff. Stop talking like this because it's making my job really tough to, uh, you know, keep manipulating our currency against other currencies. I mean, uh, the jig is up. You're showing your hand to the rest of the world that uh, it's a manipulated country. It's a manipulated economy. It's a manipulated everything. And, and you're making it tough for me to trade one. In a, in a way that's beneficial to our country. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, I'm sure that's what's going on. So I'm sure those guys are feeling it, but what am I going to do? I don't know. I got my ATIP down to 457 from 10 bucks, says Gonzo. Cruiser, rock and roll. Um, and uh, Bruce, I found a dedicated bagel shop over here. Can I send America's Best Bagels over to you? Not in Canada. Can't come across the border. No can do. Congrats, Liz. I am with you this month. Watching twice what I buy. Uh, the new CEO could bring new power to that stock, ATIP. Donnell, uh, welcome, Donnell. Uh, Bruce, if I wanted to write an MTTR put, do you think it's better to write one short-term, October 15, or long-term, uh, January, uh, April? Uh, you can go a couple of ways, obviously. Short-terms, you may not get much in the way of premiums. That might be the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the holdup. Um, on the other hand, if you go longer, um, you can probably write, you might be in a position that you could write maybe a $20 Matterport uh, put that's like out of the money right now, get the premium, which is all time premium, of course. And um, uh, you're giving yourself time by writing a long term or longer term put. You're giving yourself time for the stock to, you know, to get its, find its range, find its hood. Because right now it's 2268. It's been as high as 2328 today. It's, I mean, it's just all over the place here um and if you're writing 2250s and it it, it backs off to 20 dollars on a, on a you know on a wave like this between 20 and 25 let's say that's where you will find okay at 20 i'm gonna buy my put back uh, it went from seven dollars or six dollars or whatever down to four or three or two i'm gonna buy them back and then when the stock kind of meanders back to 23 24 i'm gonna write the put again and lock in a high premium and then when it backs off a little bit and this could be in days or over weeks but as if you're writing a four or five month contract you're going to get a nice premium because of the time factor you're out of the money at 2250 uh the stock comes down and you uh you scoop back your uh, your puts or the stock goes up you scoop back your puts. i mean it, 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 it the wave it, it's up to you how you want to play so yeah keep that in mind 2275 is matterport right now 54 cent drop on the day uh, obviously, the higher the stock goes, the lower the put will be. You'll buy it back 
the time factor going by, the lower the put will be, you win as well. So you have two ways to win, time depreciation and the rise in the market. Um, there you have it. Uh, if you feel that the stock is capable of going to 25, 30, which, which I do, uh, you write 2250s. So if you want to write 20s, that's another good strategy, writing $20 puts on Matterport three, six months out, you're going to get a premium. And again, that premium could be all yours as long as the stock stays over 20 bucks a share. It's all yours to keep if the stock stays there during that you know, at expiry time. But in the meantime, you're playing swings. And so there's some potential there. Okay, uh, let's say, um, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe if I bought every roll of toilet paper from every store within 50 miles, then I can charge triple the price. Now, if SoFi was 100, so I could fund this operation, you see, so SoFi goes to 100 a share, I could buy all the paper in my area. You're gonna need to rent a warehouse to handle it all. Then you're gonna need to have employees to help you move it all. It might be, you, know, you may wanna start smaller than that. I, I'm just saying, uh, okay. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Wow, Rocket Lab might wanna get some calls right now on Rocket Lab. Well, it's down 30 to 13.85. It is definitely on a bargoon track here at this moment. Rocket Lab has been backing off this last few days. How low it'll go, I don't know, but it's you know it's capable of a move as we know at any time. SoFi down twenty three to sixteen ninety one, GameStop off sixty cents to one ninety sixty four. We got Matterport down eighty one cents to twenty two forty two. We have Emmy off thirty cents to eight ninety. Smart Rent is at thirty one uh, down thirty one cents to thirteen ten. We got Spire down twenty eight cents to fourteen forty. ATIP up eight cents to three fifty eight. We have Sextera down nineteen cents. We have AMC up a dime. Robinhood down sixty five. Vanek down two bucks. Home Depot up a dime. IBM up a buck 27. The Dow down 13. Microsoft up six, off 61. Apple off 82 cents. Tesla down seven dollars. We have some red there. Uh, red means option po opportunities, whether you're going to go long on calls or whether you're going to buy back written call contracts, uh, either either now or later today or this afternoon. It, it all, you call the shot when you want to call the shot. If you can score cash a, a nice little return buying back call options that you've written already that are backing off in price keep your eye open for that i know a number of you have been writing matterport calls now you've been writing 20s 2250s 25s all this week keep your eye on your contracts see how they're performing the stock's off you know, 85 cents it's backing off a little bit um maybe it'll give up another dollar during the day and then come back on this afternoon who knows uh keep an eye on everything and see what you think uh the wheels are humming along nicely good morning everybody from hector good morning uh let's see i'm already up 15 percent on my uh, goldman sachs 375 june 22 calls thank you uncle b hang on to those and ride that puppy you're gonna make a lot of money there uh let's see here let's uh, let's pray war does not follow everything just went red whoa why YBM coming back to disappoint. Why, why, why? Um, in Germany, they show us uh, once in the TV sometime that brought really a huge amount of toilet paper. The half of the apartment was full. You could sit on them rather than on the couch. <laughs> Someone speculating on toilet paper. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, there, there are funny Germans and there are funny North Americans. Absolutely. That's all awesome stuff. Uh, cheers, uh, guten, uh, guten uh, Tag, uh, Deutschland, uh, good day, France, Italy, Spain, the United Kingdom, all of you in Europe that watch me, welcome. Those of you in Australia, Ireland, uh, I know I'm forgetting countries, uh, wherever you are in the world, welcome to Stock Markets with Bruce. It's nice to have you here. It's Friday, and I know in Germany it's Friday afternoon, so uh, this might not be cola in Germany. This might already be beer. Thank you, everybody. I got my caffeine-free Diet Coke going here, and thank you all for joining Jennifer and I. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to leaving Calgary. We nomads are going to be flying to L.A. in the not-too-distant future, and we will be coming to you from California not too far from now, and we'll uh, let you know how it's going. Uh, we're very excited about the next phase of our trip, and uh, we invite you to join us and uh, keep traveling with us. Uh, we're having fun here. Uh, <laughs> oh lord this is funny stuff um <laughs> yeah sure <coughs> be fit <coughs> excuse me uh bruce similar to getting in and out of stocks occasionally as they might get too high too quickly 
is it the uh, is it wise or unwise to flip in and out of options occasionally taking advantage of swings seems wise. yes absolutely the thing about options versus stock is that you don't have to be absolutely perfect on your options trade uh the beauty of of the options game is if you're writing a call option say uh, gamestop you're writing uh you know 195 call options and you're getting five dollars for the contract for say a week or 10 days you're writing up, you know, even if you're getting 10 bucks a contract, the stock cannot, can actually not move and you still make money. Like normally you would have to, you would think, well, I'm, so I'm writing a call, the stock should drop and then I'll make money. Stock doesn't have to drop at all. You just let five days go by and the, and the contract drops because time eats it alive. Those of you who are long call options on the last week of a call options life, you know what I'm talking about. These things depreciate to zero really badly very quickly so if you're a writer of call options on matterport you wrote 25 dollars call options that expire in a couple of weeks from now and the stock's now down 93 cents to 22.30 you're looking there going hey uh, just the stock price has made my option go down but by next friday a week from now if matterport is still here the contract will shrink even more and so time can make you money especially on like GameStop contracts, AMC contracts, where you're able to write weeklies. You're able to write contracts that expire every Friday. This is where you can score. Now, there are people out there who are saying, I'm going to play GameStop contracts, but I'm not going to write Friday contracts like this Friday contract. I'm going to write, when I write a contract, I write a contract that has three weeks to go or four weeks to go. But I'm not waiting for the fourth week to buy it back. I'm not going to wait till the end. I'm going to write a contract on the fourth week and I'm going to buy it back with only 10 days left to go. Or I'm going to write one for 17 days out that when it has eight days left to go, that's when I buy it back because that's where a big chunk of the depreciation takes place. I'm looking to score dollars on my GameStop shrinkage on, on these contract shrinks. I don't want to make pennies. And so if I'm writing a contract for $15 that, uh, that is three weeks to go and now with a week and a half to go, that's sitting at six bucks. I'm buying it back. I took nine off the table. I don't want the remaining six because I'm turning around right now and writing a brand new contract that has three weeks to go, three weeks to go with a nine, like a $15 price back again. And so I'm writing calls at 12 to $15 each and I'm buying them back between four and six bucks each. That's the pattern I'm going with. I don't worry about the last three, four days. Now there are other players with, with GameStop who love to write contracts with a day to go, two days to go, three days to go, four days to go, five days to go. You write contracts on Monday that die Friday. You might buy them back Wednesday. You might buy them back Tuesday afternoon. You might buy them Thursday morning. You write contracts on Tuesday that die Friday. You buy them back Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. It all depends on the movement of the stock and the shrinkage of the contract. That's the beauty of this. So yes, you can do that. Now, be fit. You can write Matterport contracts right now and write 2250s right now for the October or for November. Can't write them every week yet because they're too new. But soon you'll be able to write weeklies. The next few months you'll be able to write weeklies on Matterport. But in the meantime, yeah, you can write a 2250 contract. And if the stock drops another couple of bucks, you'll make money. If the stock sits here for three weeks, you'll make money because this contract is going to shrink in value. Either way, you have two ways to make money as opposed to just the stock itself trying to time movement on the stock absolutely worth your time to look into this yes prosit uh everyone prosit in deutschland absolutely uh skull from norway uh sold all my matterport options yesterday Woo gonna buy back monday evening Woo um let's see Spla prosit uh, um a bit uh, rob saying hey uh, i i wrote a 190 uh, gamestop covered call on wednesday when the stock was 193 and I got five bucks. Today it's at, uh, the, the stock's at 190. The stock price, is, options is two bucks. By this afternoon, it'll be under a dollar and he'll buy him back down there. So there, there you go. He's watching the market closely. It's 187.80. He's watching it like a hawk. He, he sees the stock start to run off. Right now, he'll buy the call back right now. He'll lock it off and he'll score a, a game yet again. Um, if the stock today, uh, starts moving up, he buys his call back. The stock goes up to 197 with three hours to go. He might write the 195 again. He might write a 200 if it gets to 198.50. He might write a 200 with three hours to go. He might get a buck 50, and then the stock backs off 
a buck or two, that contract is worthless. He scores again. Yes, this can be done on all kinds of stocks. Uh, I love this community. Uh, Splitter, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Uncle Brucer's friends. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Um, let's see. Good morning, Pat. Uh, let's see. I will say that I have bought some calls back too early, but I'm okay locking in a profit and avoiding further volatility. Yes, it depends on your um, personal um, risk tolerance levels. That's right. Uh, by writing calls, you're just in effect writing insurance in a way because you're being paid, you're being compensated for holding your stock and offering it for a certain amount of time for a certain price. That's the, that's really the deal. And the hope is the the final game plan is that you don't have to do anything. You you write uh, uh, GameStop one ninety five calls or two hundred dollar calls uh, that that you wrote them three weeks ago for fifteen dollars. And you didn't do anything. And right now, the stock's 187. You know what's going to happen to those $200 calls this afternoon. They're worth nothing. You keep all $15. Uh, if you wrote them for 20, you keep all 20. You don't have to be an active trader if you don't want to be. You can be a one timer. Write a call, let it die. Write a call, let it die. Write 20 calls, let them die. You have five different stocks. You wrote calls on all five of them that expire this Friday and all of them were out of the money and they're still out of the money, let them die. And then on Monday, Tuesday, you assess what contracts to write next. Are you writing next Friday contracts? Are you writing the Friday after contracts? What price do you want to charge? What what exercise level do you want to pick off? And then look at your premiums and figure it out. Go, yeah, okay, I'll write five contracts, five different contracts on five different stocks that are all expiring this Friday or next Friday or some this Friday, some next Friday, some the Friday after that. Up to you. That's the beauty of writing contracts. You are in control and you can stop the game anytime you want by buying them back. You just buy them back. You buy them back at a loss. You buy them back break even. You buy them back at a game. You can roll over if you want. You can sit on the sidelines for a while and just fold your hands and say, I'm not doing anything right now. I don't know where this thing is going. I'm not sure if it's going up or down. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to cash out and wait. And a couple of days later, it becomes apparent what the market is up to. You now write again. And there you go. Yes, uh, about to get it back for 105 Easy four bucks for three days on one contract. That's $400 US earned in three days on a single contract. If Rob had 10 uh, contract capability, if he had 1,000 shares, he'd have made four grand in three days. This is the kind of money that is being made in the option market by pros and hedge fund guys are making 10 times, 100 times this kind of money because they are flipping 50 contracts at a time, 100 at a time because they are sitting on millions of dollars. This is the game. You're just trying to take your sliver. You're trying to get your share of the pot. That's the deal. Welcome to the markets. Money's is money's, profits is profits. Yes, it is. It's all good. It's all good. Well, there you have it. Uh, we're open. We're running. The Dow is up 19 points. No problem in New York. Uh, the Dow 30. Do not have a China problem. That's good to know. Uh, we're down three on the S&P. We're down 87 on NASDAQ. There are stocks on NASDAQ that have China problems. Uh, one known as Apple. Uh, they happen to make all this stuff in China. Uh, this thing costs 75 bucks to make, 100 bucks to make, if that. And we buy these for $1,100 in Canada, $1,400 in Canada or more. Uh, that's how Apple is making ungodly profits. What I find amazing is no one holds Apple to account. And I'm not complaining about Apple. Believe me, I love Apple. I like the stock. I tell you, I love the stock. But no one holds them to account. These guys announce a $90 billion stock buyback program. And Wall Street rejoices. Stock. This is seven and a half billion dollars a month that they are buying back their own stock. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't Apple spend seven billion dollars a month, or ten billion dollars a year? I mean, that's all it would take. If that, building super factories to produce these iPhones and these iPads and these computers and all the accessories in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Um, South Carolina. Um, why not go to the poorest states of the country? I mean, the states that are the bottom of the list for education, health care, uh, human rights, uh, voting rights, uh, just, just the worst of them, and build super centers in these states to turn them around, 
and get them going. Wake these elected officials up to the fact that there's a better way to run your state. Why doesn't Apple set up billion-dollar plants in all of these states to produce all these products in America? American jobs for American people. Why don't they do that? Anyone? Does anyone have an answer? I, you know the answer. I don't even have to tell you the answer why they won't do it. Uh, it's obvious. But no one holds them to account. They could theoretically open up plants in Texas, like Tesla. They could open up plants in Nevada. S low taxes. Low tax states. They won't do it. It's a, there's a simple reason why. We want to pay. We'll pay Apple whatever we'll pay. But what we really want Apple to do secretly is we want Apple to make a killing on these things. That's what we want. We're actually prepared to pay Apple $1,400 in Canada for one of these, knowing that they're making a $1,000 profit every time we buy one. Because we own this stuff. We own Apple in every mutual fund there is. Every ETF has Apple in it. And so if Apple keeps making nothing but profits and buying up its own stock, it keeps that stock up here and could go higher. And so we're prepared to tolerate stupid prices for Apple products. <laughs> if Apple were Walmart, if Apple was Costco, uh, they would be offering their phones for $99.99 up to $199.99. <laughs> they would be taking a $25 profit per phone, not a $825 profit per phone. If they were really competitive, but they don't have to be competitive. Who has a competitive phone against Apple as far as an Apple customer is concerned? Nobody. Because you got to shake me out of my Apple to get me over to here. Uh, I got an Apple phone, Apple iPad, Apple computer. What am I going to do? Start picking up a, a non-Apple product? I don't think so. Uh, you know, that isn't going to happen. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, we, we're addicted to um uh, you know, the way it is. But really, uh, how many Americans could be employed by Apple if Apple were to produce everything domestically? Can you imagine how many jobs? We're talking 100,000 jobs. And we're not talking about 100,000 jobs that theoretically would have to pay minimum wage. Apple could afford to pay serious money because if they're still charging 1400 bucks a phone, uh, they go from uh, producing a phone for $50, $75 to $175. Net cost, that extra 100 bucks is American labor. Uh, the impact they would make on a state like Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, um, any other, uh, you know, really low-ranking U.S. state would be profound, would be incredibly profound. Housing prices would go up. Real estate values would go up. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, education system would be funded unbelievably through higher property taxes. The income tax payrolls would be massive. Uh, the impact would be massive on these state legislatures. The problem, of course, is that the state legislatures are all corrupt. And they're all run by the, you know, the, the old boys and girls, and uh, they don't have an interest. In, I don't think they have an interest in helping their citizens. I, I, they're at the bottom of the list. I mean, there's a reason they're number 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, and 45 in every category across the board. Sorry, but they are. Uh, but Apple could make a difference. I don't know. What can I tell you? It's just me. I'm just an old man. What can I say? I don't know anything. Uh, anyway, there you go. <laughs> get off my home states, man. Get, get off my home states. Uh, so far, recovering nicely. Let's hope so. Uh, would be nice. Would be nice. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, what do you really think about the Bible Belt? Uh, I love the Bible Belt, uh, you know. But boy, oh boy, the, the, you know, you, you can scoop water with a bucket or you can scoop water with hands like this and just watch the water go through. How do you, I can you know, pick up the water. Come on, join the party. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't know. Ah, what can I say? Ah. <laughs> Some people hate the truth. They really hate it. Uh, anyway, Uncle Bruce Apple uh, realized that southern states are hopelessly behind the curve. Opening plants in these states would be uh, no something, but unfortunately, these states are way too backwards. Uh, well, you know, there's a reason why uh, you know you see uh, you see certain states succeed and certain states just don't when they attract business. Um, it's the way it is. Um, yeah, here you go. If Apple makes a Texas phone, they would triple their market cap. Laugh out loud. I mean, can you imagine if Apple uh, were proudly promoting the fact that proudly made in Texas? 
whew, that'd be pretty pretty powerful message to all Americans. Made in America, baby, by Americans for Americans for global export. You think about this too that 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 if Apple products were made in America, they would then be exported from America to the rest of the world. Uh, this would turn the tables on on the trade deficit for the United States. It's the United States trade deficit would drop dramatically. It could actually go surplus, which would make Americans richer, completely richer everywhere. Because if the American dollar raises against all foreign currencies, all imports drop in cost. I mean, this 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 you know. I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying, trying to tell you. I'm doing what I can. Anyway, uh, 2257 on Matterport. It is. It is recovering. Uh, some of these stocks are bouncing up right now. Uh, Matterport was as low as 2277. Uh, no, it was lower than that. Excuse me. We're we're my my computer's screwed up here. But we were we're bouncing back here on some of these stocks. Take my word for it. We're improving. 14 uh, 1369 on Rocket Lab right now. Not sure if these uh, quotes are accurate. I'm just watching my poor phone here is not reacting too well, um, and I'm trying to get my uh, my big ass iPad to work properly. It's not it's not cooperating. Uh, we're watching this market here. Let's see how this goes. Bear with me, folks, as I keep trying to uh, follow this market as best as I can. 880 was a low on ME. We're now at 894. That's looking more accurate. Uh, Matterport. Um, I'm not sure which device to believe. I don't know which device is right. Um, I'm having trouble getting my 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 uh, big ass iPad to give me an update. Uh, we might be having connection problems here. Just just bear with me, folks. Uh, you know, it's not my internet; it's the hotels. 2280, I think, is where we're at on Matterport now. The lowest 2212. Yeah, okay, that's accurate. Uh, so that's an improvement of almost 60 cents. Uh, still only 785,000 traded. Not even heavy volume. SoFi, uh, 1693 now, we were as low as 1662. Yep, we're down 21. We're almost at the high of the day, uh, you know, early trading, looking close here. Um, Rocket Lab now got to 1358, now we're 1372. So we're, we're seeing a snapback here in some of these stuff. The Dow is up 50. Uh, that's cool. New home sales rose in August despite record high prices, says the Census Bureau. Uh, that's the deal right there. Okay, uh, Dow up 42, S&P up 3.4, two markets are higher. NASDAQ still down 61 points at the moment. Okay, uh, 22.73 on uh, Matterport. Okay, ME 893, Smart Rent down 20, Spire down 34 to 14.34, the low is 14.01. We bounced back. The high was 15.28 on Spire today. Typical day. Like this ATIP up 11 to 361, getting better all the time, uh, waiting for announcements on C, uh, ATIP. Uh, Sextero down 32 cents right now. Um, we've got uh, Robin, uh, we got uh, uh, IBM up $1.34 at 138. The Dow up now 54.8 points. Microsoft down 166. Apple down 90. Microsoft got as low as. Uh, 297.61, it's uh, 297.86, so we're still around the low of the day on Microsoft. Apple uh, got down to 145.57 or 145.93, we're still around the low there. Tesla down only 2 bucks, 280, nothing to worry about here. Um, BlackBerry only giving up 27 cents of that $1 plus gain yesterday, looking good. Uh, Royal, Rib Royal Caribbean, uh, 134 gain, uh, did drop to 87.80, now 89.50. Funny how that one jumps. Uh, that thing is so overpriced. Uh, Goldman up six cents. Um, the low was 388. It's now 391.92 coming on. So it's actually down this morning, now coming back on it with a gain on Goldman Sachs. So we'll, we'll keep following that, of course. Uh, nicely done. Down 41 in Rocket Lab, 374. Uh, SoFi only down 15 cents. We're at 16.99. We're coming on pretty quick on SoFi, looking good. GameStop down 368. Matterport down 50 cents to 22.72. Emmy down 27. Smart Rent down 20. And Spire now only down 38 cents to 14.30. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, good morning, all you beautiful people. Uh, Deanna, welcome to the show this morning. Square saying hi to you. Um, oh, just saved my big ass iPad from falling. Yay! Oh my goodness. Uh, these are the trials and tribulations when you're a nomad because you are um, you are living in someone else's uh, property and you're trying to just <laughs> do the best you can with what you got. 
Uh, it survived. Uh, hopefully, we won't have that happen again. Um, lots of fun with my big-ass iPad. Uh, it, there must be an earthquake happening on the stock market. A good thing. Let's hope so. Uh, <laughs> 2267 on Matterport. Uh, let's see what we got here. See, Bruce, here in America, Dammit Jim says, we want everyone to make $15 an hour minimum, and China pays pennies. So we would have to have them say, hey, let's make less and move to the backward thinking USA. <laughs> Farragut, approve for options. I better go to Bruce's school first uh, before I get. Uh, it might be a good idea. Check those classes out on uh, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. I uh, head to my lesson section there, class section. Cheers, everybody around the world uh, to Stock Markets with Bruce today. I'm glad you're here from wherever you are. If you've been picking up these different mugs, I thank you. Redbubble.com is our little store that we're part of. Uh, get yourself one of these items. We get a royalty every time you buy one, and it keeps us on the road. <laughs> Bama Bay. North Alabama is where rockets were developed that put men on the moon. Backward and intelligence is not the problem in the South. There you go, right on, Bama Bay. Beautiful. Uh, Uncle Bruce, what do you think about a coffee emoji? A coffee emoji? I don't know. It might be something. Good morning, Deanna from Larry. Um, Nicholas, uh, hey, Uncle B and Chad, do you all have um, any opinions on how to maximize your value on your car when you're planning to sell it and buying another one? Well, my, my thinking is you uh, you get your car all purdied up, um, even if you have to hire a detailer to really clean your car like it was a brand new like a like like on a used lot where they spit it right up spend the hundred hundred twenty dollars and get that done because you'll get way more than that back um maybe uh you know a, a handy a handyman a mechanic that works out of home uh, someone that can do paint touch-ups for you a little little tiny repairs uh sell it privately versus trying to trade it in with a dealer um, check your car. Try to find, try to find what your car is going for in the open market. If you've got a three, five, six-year-old car, find out what your car sells for on the internet at car dealerships. Just do searches, to see what you can find. Find your car and figure out. Oh, my car with so many miles on it is this guy's asking this much. This guy's asking that much. Blue Book says this much. Then you have a handle on what your car is really worth. Now, purdy it up. Purdy it up as best you can and uh, try and sell it privately. That's the best way to max out. Anyway, that might be the best, might not be the best. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, here we go. Make sure all services are up to date. Hope we have all the paperwork. All sell it privately. You can. There you go. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, lots of comments, questions, everyone who's here. Thank you, everybody. So I'm trying to keep up with you guys. Not easy to do. Um, uh, uh, Succel is, is a new member. I think that's uh, renewal, and I appreciate it, Succel. Thank you for being here. If you're, if you're brand new, I love it. If you're a renewal, I love it, too. Um, uh, here we go. On to PC. Hey, by the way, Bruce, uh, Alabama has attracted Mercedes, Amazon, Airbus, Honda, Toyota, Hyundai, Austral, Huntsville, both the U.S. space right. Alabama has improved uh, a lot. Uh, other states around it, not so much. Uh, in fact, Alabama has scored the top five in area development magazines, ranking the best states for doing business for six consecutive years. NTPC, you're not from Alabama, are you? Uh, and we have a consistent football team that ranks number one and wins national championships. Roll Tide. Nice. I'm nice. supposed to say it like Tom. Yeah, Alabama. That's right. See, Jen's Jen's keeping me on the straight and narrow here. Good morning, Jen from John. I got a fuzz. Uh, Did you fall out of your chair? Is that what I heard? Oh no, I, I don't know what happened, but the the the, the iPad yeah. was falling. Oh, and I caught it. Oh, on the air live. Nice. While I was talking to the camera, I caught. Oh, and, maybe uh, we can get nothing hurt. to do like a slow mo. Yeah, like a. Or, or just that. Or not. Or not. <laughs> or we don't do anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I've been ranting and raving all day. Um, you know why? Why? Well, because you got up at four in the morning and discovered you had no cream. Well, I was a crisis this morning. <laughs> it was a crisis. There was a crisis here. Uh, I, I, it's been averted, but oh, we were in a crisis mode. Uh, woke up and uh, got ready to make myself my latte, opened the fridge, 
no milk. Nada. No cream. Nada. Nada. <laughs> I'm in a hotel. It's 4.15 a.m. <laughs> Where am I going? Downstairs. Uh, so I go downstairs. And a gentleman from the front desk comes out. Yes, sir. How can I help? <laughs> I said, I got a crisis. What's the matter? I have no cream. Uh, and, of course, I have no cream for my wife and I. Although she doesn't generally take cream. Um, and so I know what he was going to do. He was going to get me those little, you know, those little tiny, yeah. those little tiny plastic containers of cream. You know those? You need like, I don't know, 10, 20. I just want to say on behalf of the world, I hate those. You know why I hate them? One, they're tiny. Two, they're one third full. Maybe half full. Why is it that these creamery companies provide these establishments with cream that's half full? If I were the buyer of this product, I wouldn't they'll take delivery of. And it's an environmental nightmare because you've got a metal top with a plastic yeah. on. No one separates yeah. it. Yeah. They go in the landfill. Yeah. I said to the guy, you have a little store beside your front desk. You sell chocolate bars, yeah. you sell chips, you sell cappuccino glass container yeah. drinks. Buy cola. You don't have milk here. I can't really? buy skim milk. I can't uh -huh. buy two percent. I can't buy any cream. You have no dairy, anything in here. How are you? How good? I'm the, I didn't say this. I thought this. Is it any wonder we're going to hell with our diets? You don't even sell milk. I mean, you could sell, you could sell like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the almond milk and the oat milk. and You don't even sell that. You got nothing for coffee for us in the room. So, but he went and got me 10 of these little tiny, you know. And so I opened the first one. I poured it in my coffee mug. And the bottom of my mug was still not covered in cream. <laughs> Only half of the bottom of my mug was covered in cream. The other half, I could see the bottom of my coffee cup. I thought, this is ridiculous. This is where we in North America, we're screwing it up. Uh, we have cows everywhere. Uh, there's, there's milk everywhere, but not in cream containers. Oh, no. I don't see a lot of sugar. Well, they also th you know, threw in the sugar, but I don't use sugar. I use a Splenda, you know, so I got all the sugar here. He just he just wanted to add me sugar packets in case I needed them too without asking him for it. What can I say? Unbelievable. Anyway, a tw ten, 10 of those later, and a couple of shots of the of the latte. I was all sh I was all coffeeed up, and I could go on my China rant. I could go on my China rant. Ah. Now I heard on the radio this morning that the the Huawei executive is going to have a virtual appearance in an American court today where she will plead guilty. Does that mean the two Michaels get to go home? Those of you who don't in China. Those of you in America and most of my viewers are American, so and and you know I love you. You know I love you. Um but uh Canada has been a pawn yeah. in a struggle between China and the US now for two and a half years. And specifically two have, Michaels. We have this we have this uh, this lady who is the daughter of a very wealthy Chinese industrialist that owns Huawei Telephone, the, the, yeah, the Huawei she's company. Like a VP. She's a senior yeah. VP of some kind. And the United States Justice Department has wanted to charge her with a potential crime of, of misleading bankers on something. Some kind of a money laundering or um, misrepresentation, not money laundering, a misrepresentation of facts. Anyway, it's a dispute. And she was on a flight from Hong Kong to, I believe, Mexico, but by way of Vancouver, British Columbia, and then connect to Mexico. And when she landed in Canada, the Canadian border authorities detained her, uh, found out who she was, searched her stuff. At the request of the United States. Oh, all at the request of the United States. As she was cooperating with Canadian authorities, and then they arrested her and put her under arrest for extradition to the United States under an extradition agreement between our countries. Uh, she, of course, uh, being as wealthy as she is, could afford the top legal representation that money could buy. And the country of China was absolutely outraged. And uh, the country of China decided that um, even though the, the, the lady in question was given house arrest. She owns a house in Vancouver, two of them, by the way. She's been in her own house in Vancouver for the two and a half years. With an ankle. With an brace, <laughs> an ankle brace and security, make sure she won't run away. 
Uh, she's made every court appearance. She's done everything as, as opposed by law. With that, China decided Canada was discriminating against a Chinese person, and they promptly arrested two within two days two prominent Canadian former diplomats in China working as consultants and charged them with spying charges and uh, put them in jail for six months. Uh, just, just put them in jail. No charges were given. They just put them in jail. Then they not made the nice charges. Not, nice not a nice deal. Then they made the charges. Then they had a secret trial, and they haven't released the results of the trial. Kind of funny, isn't it? How you have a trial, you don't result, release the results of guilty or not guilty. Funny, huh? Because this woman is still waiting and fighting her extradition charges. Yeah. Now, today we find out the word on the street is apparently there's going to be a um, a virtual, a virtual uh, court hearing between her and the states somehow where she might agree to pleading uh, uh, guilty to a charge of whatever and they will ban her from the states. For, it'll be a slap on the wrist crap thing. And she will then uh, be not extradited to the U.S. after all. Because in Canada, this trial of her extradition has been going on in the Canadian courts for two and a half years. And the defense has a strong case to say she shouldn't be extradited whatsoever. There are no credible charges from the United States that would make this stick. This was the Trump administration trying to get their hands on her to try to make a point with China. And the Biden administration wants nothing to do with her. That's They're not saying it. I'm saying it for you in plain English. Biden doesn't want her in there. He doesn't need this headache. So can we make this go away? How can we make this go away? Well, we'll just do a virtual reality trial where she can just virtually appear on camera from her house in Vancouver. Wow. And just agree to a Trump, uh, to, to, a, to a, a, a crap little misdemeanor. And it's a slap on the wrist. And then it's all, it's all dropped. She won't be extradited. Canada doesn't have to have a ruling in court whether she's guilty or not or must be sent away or not. She's free to go about her business. She will get on a private jet that Huawei will send to her for her, and she will return to China, yeah. and she will be hailed as a, a national hero over there. And then in a few months, weeks, maybe, quietly, a couple of Canadians will be found not guilty of charges or charges will be dropped as a uh, sign of goodwill between our countries and these gentlemen who have been in solitary confinement for two and a half years in these shithole jails in China will be allowed to go home to their families and there are two other Canadians who've been sentenced to death in trumped up drug charges they might get a, a um, fine and a suspended sentence and maybe they'll come out in six months or a year I don't know. Um, this is in Canada. We are all pissed off with these guys, just pissed off, and it's just another indication of how corrupt this country is. Completely corrupt, and uh, they have no credibility in the international world, as far as many of us are concerned. But we're just citizens. What 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 rights have we got? Don't go to Hong Kong and Beijing for a holiday, Bruce. Uh, you don't want to go there. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on again. Jen mentioned it. I mentioned it to you. With a little more color commentary. I'm picking up a rant. She got another rant going. She got you got two for the price of one. A two for a what a deal you guys are getting today! Oh, we love China up here. We just love the Chinese government. Oh, they're great. Why we sell them wheat? I don't know. I don't know why we. Why do I sell? Why? Why is my country selling them any food? When they're holding our. Citizens. They're holding our guys. I, I, suspend all food exports to China immediately. <laughs> Done. You want to retaliate? Let's play games. Hungry? Are you hungry? <laughs> we have wheat up to here. We got soybeans. We got... You know what we'll do? We'll give it away to our Canadian citizens for free rather than sell it to you assholes. How about that game? Uh, we can play this game. We can afford it. Our dollar is accepted at all U.S. banks. You know, we pay our bills. Uh, you know, uh, why don't we uh, uh, not export uh, any other serious needs that they have? and find out which of other countries on the world are our friends and not our friends who are also going to suspend shipments to, to goods. Nobody. Nobody. Because everybody's greedy. Uh, there's, you know, the two Canadians in jail. Well, you know, we're sorry, but we, we're still going to send our wood to China. Yeah. yeah. 
So you know, you know who your friends are. You know how much power you really have. It's it's unbelievable. It's just ridiculous. It's just ah, so stupid. Anyway, there you have it, kids. Um, we're just trying to stay on top of these markets. At least I'm trying to until Jen gets me all riled up. Uh, SoFi down four cents, seventeen ten. We're about to go green. GameStop down two seventy seven. Matterport down seventy six cents. ME down twelve cents. Smart, Smart Rent down thirty one. Spire only down thirty. ATIP still positive four cents. Uh, Six Terra down twenty four. There you go. Uh, Home Depot up 131. IBM up 155. Dow Jones up 58 cents. You know, you folks down in the States think we're all so nice and polite all the time. <laughs> you got Martin Short down there, Canadian. You love him. Uh, we love him. He's a nice guy. Makes you laugh, you know. Got a lot of great Canadian talent down there. Jim Carrey and all kinds of singers and stuff. But we also have our opinions. Uh, it's just that we, you know, we generally don't vent very much but i'm allowed to do that because i'm on youtube as long as they don't kick me off uh, i don't know i mean come on man come on man oh man good morning jen uh what can i say uh, no cream what's the hotel manager's name let me talk to him i'll mention jen mention him uh, i'll get this fixed for you bruce i'm bringing you a new cow sit tight bruce um <laughs> uncle bruce you managed to make me he managed it to made my day. You made my day. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, thanks, Uncle Bruce, and the chat. I'll think about all that. Bruce, use heavy whipping cream for your coffee. You'll use less, and it tastes so much better. Oh, yes. Yes, It's it's uh, and it's all calorie-free, too. <laughs> I used a uh, dark chocolate lint ball that I tossed in my coffee this morning. <laughs> Ooh, wow. A.K.A. Mocha. Mocha. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. That's healthy, right? Oh, that's Sorry, all good. Chocolate. It, Chocolate's good. It's a vegetable. You're smiling. Yes. That's healthy. That, there you go. You, mentally, that's a good thing. Uh, if you're mentally happy, that's all that matters, doesn't it? Oh, isn't my. It? Isn't, it? Isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? That isn't it? <laughs> you know, one third of the calories that you ingest are eaten up by ingesting them. So yeah. really, only two thirds of the calories you ingest actually stay in your body. The Which rest is your brain, right? Because I have like two hips and two cheeks, so it gets shared equally. Yeah, and 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 then every time you step, you're using up those calories. So uh -huh. you know, walk around and get more chocolate. I mean, just use it up. So by making you a bagel, yeah, it's like an exercise program. This is like this justifies another lint chocolate in another coffee bar. That's what this. See, see right see? there, awesome. It's the science is obvious. It's obvious. I mean, it's, <laughs> for anyone to see. I mean, there's no. It, just follow the breadcrumbs, people. Come on, <laughs> pay attention. Keep up. Keep up, will you? Jeez, get with the science. Read books, people. Come on. I don't know. Have you had real sugar? Is that what's going on today? No, no? I honestly have not had real sugar. I honestly, I, I've had my latte and now my caffeine-free cola, and I'm okay. prositing, prositing all of my friends in Europe and everywhere in the world. And I thought just. Prosite? Pro prosite. You I know, thought prosite, you had made prosite. up a new word. Just saying prosite and then <laughs> yes. prosite, prosite, and then I'm thinking, well, multiples of prosite. <laughs> Do you know what that's called? No. Does anybody out there know what, what term applies to the word he just did? Anyone? It's a it's an early trivia question. Yeah, I, I, I'm so behind the comments. I don't see what they're saying. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're responding right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm 20 minutes behind comments, and it's getting worse. Because of your rants. My rants, and because we're it chatting. takes a long time. It takes it takes time. So, what's it going to be? Would you like that croissant for breakfast this morning? Mm. Oh, mm. oh. Uh, Would you mm. like a bagel? Still have a hanging for bagel. Yeah. Now that my teeth are working. Last night was was monumental. <laughs> monumental last night. Jen and I went to one of the absolute landmarks of this city in Calgary called Pete's Drive In. For the second time. I've talked about Pete's <laughs> Drive-In before. Uh, if you've watched this channel, you know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about, you're not watching this channel. Uh, shame on you. Uh, Pete's uh, Drive-In. Um, absolute landmark. I got my usual uh, double cheeseburger, no onions, uh, last night. And we were in the parking <laughs> but then lot. then for the side, just for fun. Okay, here, here she loves talking about this. She can't help. But, go ahead. Go ahead, tell him. Go ahead, tell him. So go. does he have fries with that? No, no, we don't have fries. He has onion rings, and every time they repeat the order to him, they go, so you want the double burger with no onions and a side of onion rings. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, tell why. Well, simple. <laughs> it's, it's simple, really. Certain restaurants, as you all know, when you order onion rings, they are big, fat, thick rings, baked, covered in a in a in a thing, and deep fried, right? And even deep fried, they come out and you chew into them. Those onions are really raw inside, like they're soft-ish, but they're not. You know what I mean? They're not cooked, cooked, right? Pete's Drive-In has really thin onion rings, a skinny onion ring. So they obviously slice the onion very thin. So when you deep fry those, the outside of the um, and it's onion ring. And thin batter. Yeah, the, the batter is crunchy and crispy, and the inside of that onion is also crunchy and crispy. It's like a well-done French fry, right? I love it like that. I do, but on the burger, the, it's raw chopped onion and they just chop onion and it's raw bits and i don't like raw onion i just don't eat raw onion on anything i i really i don't and on my burger i don't prefer i prefer not to have raw onion on my burger i go to mcdonald's and i order a quarter pounder no onions i order a big mac no onions i don't like the raw but when chopped, he goes i'm consistent when he goes to in and out he does not have grilled onions no, I don't. I don't order the grilled because they're not deep fried, uh, crispy. Oh, they're they're so still soft good. and gummy. And I just I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just me. It's a me. <laughs> it's you can me. have your burger and your fries any way you want. I don't care. Is, but on my burger, as Gaga says, he was born this way. Yeah. You know, we celebrities, we have certain <laughs> rights. And one of the rights we have is to eat the burger we Only like the way we like to eat ends. it. But we have to also tolerate sometimes as celebrities our other half that we have to, no matter how gorgeous they are, we have to take that. And they are high needs individuals. You know what I'm talking about, people. You people out there with hot wives, they're not easy going. They're very high maintenance. Just saying. Just saying. I tolerate it. I take care of it. It's okay. But I like my burger the way I like my burger. Give me a break. I mean, come on. Yeah, I have a webinar. Coming up soon, so you're not my only table. Cheese was on a cheese was on a very <laughs> very well toasted bagel, please. Okay. Even more toasted than yesterday. More toasted. Can you do it? I is it possible? Toast it forever. Can you move the rack up a little higher towards the no. uh, the thing? Can you no. can you get my bagel? No. Can you get those sesame seeds going? I I really want them popping. Dying here. I'm dying. I, I, it's so hard to be a celebrity on YouTube. It's very so difficult hard. when you're a worldwide recognized face on this channel. Uh, it's very difficult to be. I'm just saying here. Uncle Bruce at the front desk asking for a cow. Uh, <laughs> always gaming. Really looking forward to Uncle Bruce's action slow mo video. You know the internet. It'll deliver. Uh, a fan bill. Uncle Bruce, I have margin call from Fidelity. Should I ever grant it? Oh, you could do that. Make margin calls illegal. There you go. Uh, that sounds like a true hotel crisis for Canada, says Blair. No milk. Uh, lobby blast. Well, Katie. In a, in a city known as Cowtown. A cow, city known as Cowtown. Uh, the 7-Eleven sometimes has the whipped or steamed milk machine for their coffees. Uh, yeah, there's no 7-Eleven around here. We're, we're miles away from a 7-Eleven. We're in a little part of town here where we're in a secret location, tucked away. Uh, security and everything, you know, and so <laughs> we're closer to a real cow than a 7-Eleven. I think so. Uh, plus, selling privately means you actually have to do all that work and dealing with fires and all that serious headache. We're talking about that card again. Yeah, there we go. Uh, just don't answer the call, fan bill. Just don't answer. Uh, <laughs> I have a friend that flies helicopters. I got another friend that has cows. I can help you out, man. I can, I can get you milk so fast. Uh, just return the cow, please. Uh, <laughs> Or keep the helicopter. <laughs> Bruce needs a Snickers bar real fast. This guy needs us to get him a Snickers bar. He's losing it. He's like Joe Pesci on that commercial. Oh, no. Uh, next Prime, uh, $2 donation. Sorry about the coffee troubles. Here's one on me. Fendel, <laughs> uh, Michael, I'm going to Evergrande it. Laugh out loud. Kidding aside, I bought back one of my GameStop cover calls, so I might have to sell a few to meet the margin call. Um, it kept me from traveling to China all for my small business. There you go, hockey rink lap. There you go. Uh, let's see. Um, oh my gosh, is she a family member of one of the owners? From yeah, she's the daughter of the big man. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she's 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 a billionaire. S. He's a billionaire. -er. Yeah, yeah, May yeah. Wan yeah, May Wan Zhu is her name or something like that. Yeah, she's been in news up in the news up here for two and a half years. And our two Michaels are in prison, in some dark prison, where no family members are allowed to visit them. 
Um, lawyers are allowed to visit them once a, every three months, and representatives from the Canadian government, the Embassy of Canada, are allowed to see them once every 90 days, I think is the deal, or once every six months. They are cut off from the outside world, and uh, these guys are, they are pawns by the Chinese uh, morons over there who call themselves law-abiding whatever they are. Yeah, these, these guys are... You know what they are. You know what they are. I just can't say it. We know what they are. Yeah, and it's not pretty. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, the U.S. government is trying to get out of this while saving face. Yeah, two and a half years. Thanks, United States. Thanks. Thanks, Trump administration, for setting this one up. This is some of the crap we're still dealing with with this guy and his people. It's ridiculous. Innocent people have been really hurt by this. Unbelievable. Ridiculous. What can I say? Uh, there it is. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, China has the Olympics. I tell you right now, I, if I were the prime minister of this country, we would not be sending our Olympians over to China for the Winter Games. No way. Not a chance. No NHLer. We wouldn't, we, I would not allow a single NHLer to play hockey over there. No damn way. No, no way am I helping these guys with the worldwide prestige. Screw those bastards. I don't like them. I'm not impressed. Anyway, there you go. A lot of companies are slowly waking up to the dangers of doing business in China as well as the government. No kidding, Sherlock. Yeah, you are taking your life in your hands. You're going over there. You you could disappear at any time. Ridiculous. Ah, ah calm down, Bruce. Calm. Uncle Bruce, um, good morning, Uncle Bruce. I have four um, CRM sold out of the money for 113 now they're in the money at 17 in the money should i buy the back uh, my average cost 213 what to do gasp uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i think you wrote four call contracts and they're in the money now uh i don't know when they expire um, um a rollover is likely the game plan you should be following take my classes and figure this out it's all in there um that's what you should be doing um let's see uh, oh man wow all this because there's no cream hate to see when you're not getting room service um canadians are the the greatest big brother of americans you you guys you should know that we're your best buddies we're your best friends uh we're there for you we'll help you out any way we can every time we can uh but sometimes we just don't get treated right it just it's really funny whipped and cream is delicious but high in fat and cholesterol that's true um let's see uh let's see uh Mm, uh, Jen is trying to keep up those Hollywood looks with that chocolate. Uh, you know, if I met Uncle Bruce in public, I was going to say hi, but now I'm too scared. <laughs> oh man! If you're if you're watching me holding a coffee in my hand, you can approach me. It's I got my coffee. I'm good now. Sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, pro. Okay, here we go. Uh, prosit. Uh, uh, prosetine sounds like a medication. Um, uh, Gerard is adding an ing to Jen's question. Um, a hungry grizzly prost, cheers. A DQ, I think Jen means neologism. Neologism, uh, Bill, China certainly stuck it to a lot of people banning digital currency. Ouch. Uh, let's go so fi, a so fly. Ew, says Auntie. Um, Jen, are you eating fair trade chocolate? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so is up four cents by the way 23 and me is unchanged now um aspires up 17 cents to 14.90 up 22 cents now atip is up five and a half we're getting green signals here we're getting green uh, signals coming through on our stocks now we're starting to move up on some of them so we're coming around dow's down 11 s p down two nasdaq down 66 but we got green showing up love it love it um you ever tried bulletproof coffee you you blend coffee with heavy whipping cream and butter it's delicious Oh my gosh. Um, team onion rings. Uh, uh, red onions, the only onion I eat raw, says uh, LL. Uh, no grilled, I'll eat, no grilled onions. You're a monster, Uncle Bruce. <laughs> Michael, yeah, I get it, Bruce. Well done. Fries are the only way. Um, I can't do pickles, says Farragans. So fly, so fly. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah, he's 30 minutes behind. Please feed him, Jen. 100% <laughs> with you, Bruce. No raw onions for me, but a good crispy thin onion ring is spot on. There he is. He's eating Uncle Bruce diet seminar. Uh, ETA on the cow, five hours. No animal style for us, Uncle Bruce. So fly, come on, baby. You can do it. True, it's a lot of work being a natural beauty. It's not easy. Uh, I'm only seven minutes behind the comments. 
Bruce has Friday Fiego. Uh, Don Russell, you eat a double cheeseburger and onion rings at Pete's, and you're worried about a little whipping cream? Come on, man. And don't forget the chocolate banana milkshake. Uh, but like once a week, maybe once a month, uh, not every day. Uh, you can't do that every day. No way. Uh, good idea on the Cowtown. Uh, they're also sending an additional unit as backup. Uncle Bruce is, is in such a good mood this morning. I wonder what happened earlier this morning. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what, Bruce? I can tell what hotel you're in by the number of the cockroaches on the wall. That's how I know where you are. Uncle Bruce Hotel is so secret and north of the border that Santa Claus life's there in the neighborhood for sure, too. Um, hi, Uncle Bruce. I'm looking uh, I'm looking um, call Rocket Lab expiry April strike 1250 for 370 for 430 premium. Should I jump in? Um, are you looking to buy this uh, thing? You're looking to buy it, aren't you? Yeah, you're looking to buy a Rocket Lab call, a 1250. Uh, it's a 115 in the money, 135 in the money, I should say, 135 in the money. And they're asking 370, what's so 374, 40. Uh, that's too expensive. Uh, I would, I would not be buying that. No, I would not be buying that. Uh, let's go, Uncle Bruce. Uh, you might be better off writing a writing a put. Uh, Uncle Bruce, you owe the swear jar about 10 bucks today. Michael Hunt, he's fired up. Um, I hope the D D D Department of Justice goes after Trump and co. and looks for death families for treason and sedation. Democrats need to make a statement. Uh, Bill Coyne, nice. Uh, in the swear jar, $5 per. Flying out of a jar, Bruce. I uh, love my Canadian peeps. Uh, Spire is alive. Um, Uncle Bruce, my 1550 SoFi covered calls that expire today are not backing down from 17, and I think I'll get a sign. How does a rollover work? I'm on Robin Hood. Okay, so SoFi right now is 1724. Uh, you got 1550 calls, so they're in the money. Uh, if you buy your call back and write maybe a 1750 call option for October or November, you could theoretically get more money for those calls than to buy back these calls. That's a rollover where you're bringing in more cash. You could look at writing 20s for November or December. That might also break even or give you more money than you're paying for these. Um, you have, theoretically, until the close today to buy these back. The 1550s are worth book value of dollar 75 right now 1770 1725 is a stock so they're worth 175 so if you can get them for two bucks 225 and you can get 225 or more for selling 1750s or 20s for november or december or january that's a rollover that's how i would do it boom oh yeah yeah bama yeah i'm having some green now too uh cody Hey, Uncle Bruce, could I sell my SoFi shares and buy $12.5 calls out to January 2024? If I did, I'd be able to write more contracts because I'm in control of more upside. Is this a good idea? Is there any downside? Um, okay, so you would be buying in-the-money calls, which you would write for poor man covered call strategies. Can be done. Uh, yes, it can be done. Yes, that's you're going way out. Uh, you don't have to go out to 2024, but yeah, you could go out to 2023 and maybe pay less, get more contracts, which lets you write more contracts. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're writing three versus five or seven, or you know, I mean, you buy more calls at a lower price that are 2023s, you can write more calls. So think about that. Um, you know, Aaron's saying, I love grilled, onion, grilled onions. I love raw onions, uh, to be honest. I just like onions, man. And that's okay. That's good for you. It works. Doesn't work for me completely, but it's okay. Uh, I can eat a peach for hours. Uh, way to go, damn it. Um, uh, Mike, uh, damn it, Jim, I, I see you, uh, Nick Cage. Auntie, uh, gee, what a surprise. Carlos, did you search the room for bed bugs? Uh, the, 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 they like the bagel blood or something? What's going on here? Fenville, uh, the credit average. Uh, uh, please search how to roll options on Robinhood on YouTube. There's a video there, or you can watch my lessons too. Uh, Michael, come on, Spire, do, do that thing you do that you know, do that thing that you do that thing where you go up, you know, uh, 1437, 1487, now up 19. Do do that that higher thing. Me down two cents. Uh, Matterport down 82. SoFi up 12. Uh, that's what it is. And so, so so Uncle Bruce, you're saying I should be writing that call option for Rocket Lab then? Laugh out loud. Uh, kidding. Uh, or, or sell shares and write long puts at a strike that you'll be fine with paying 
there's another strategy. Sell, that's right, sell the stock and then write, write cash secured puts. Exactly. Uh, that's another move. Sam, um, uh, thank you, Sam, from this, uh, for this donation. Uh, bought Yang all through the week. I don't even know what that is. A uh, three-time bear China real estate. Just an idea. If anyone thinks it's just a start China, so you're the negative on China real estate is one way to do it. There you go. Maybe that might work. Wavy gravy. Is Matterport bottoming out at 2230? I don't know. It's a 2240. Uh, maybe it did. I don't know. Let's go. Sofa, I hit 18 today. Come on. Let's go, Mike. Um, uh, exactly, Bruce. You just give me your onions, and that's what makes the world go around. I won't give you any food in return, though, because I don't share food. All right? There you go. There. It's a one-way deal. I, I put onions in my scrambled eggs. It can be done. Uh, okri are just like onions. Uh, IBM finally moving steadily in the right direction this week. Uh, soft so fly is moving. Soft so fly at 14 cents. Uh, Fendabel, the credits average. Um, so pretty much uh, you're looking at buying your cover call back at uh, $1.70 right now, then turn around and sell another cover call for October 15, same 15 0.5 strike for 205 pocket the $35 you could do that see you could do that uh, we don't talk about IBM here says Michael uh, we don't talk about that uh, Joey doesn't share food uh, damn it Jim is saying he doesn't share food that's what he's you know uh, he caught up uh, gas uh, spires going to 15 I caught up I've caught up spire 1494 up 26 cents going to 15 go 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 so far up 13 cents Rocket Lab up 30, down 32. GameStop down 329. Oh. Left it in longer. Left know. it in longer. Left it in longer. It, we have to find that balance between your brown sesame seeds and the ability to bite through it. Oh. Because it the toaster oven dries it out. Yeah. Well, there's there's the uh, there's the that's bottom. That's the bottom. There's the top. Uh, no, no, that's, that's the, the bottom. bottom. There's the top right there. To there you go. See. You see those sesame seeds? Little, seeds? little brown there, you oh, see? There you so, no, well, let's try it out. Okay. Not crunchy enough. No. I mean, it's, you okay. know, a lot of gumminess. Okay. But you may have to, do you turn them over? Yes. <laughs> you do them, then you turn them over, do them again. Because it only has a top element. Yeah, yeah. The inside is very spongy. It's like it's just warm. There's some crunchiness here, but I think both sides need to be, you know. But this side, yeah, yeah, it has to really get it. Okay. But it's not a it's not a toaster. We'll be rectifying that in Palm Desert, California. Do not worry, people. And Jen does the best she can do with what she's got. I love her for it because she's the best. <laughs> she's my bestest friend in the whole world, and she hits. She's a little smile maker. She, you only hit those who you love the most. That's what they tell me. Mm. Do you know that today is Angela Merkel's last day as yeah. chancellor? They're going into an election. Season. Yeah, that's right. 16 years. Yeah, yeah she's uh, got a bit of a track record. Um, Germany has a federal surplus of 20 billion dollars a year a surplus as a country year in year out year in year out uh socialist country free university free health care um best highways in the world um incredible economy um you know a little bit of waterfront on the north sea no oil and gas uh really um they import everything they need they export incredible stuff and yet, the, one of the richest countries in the world. It's incredible. It's just incredible. Yeah. They make good beer. And um, bratwurst are pretty good. And so is a schnitzel. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> all German food is pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't think I found a bad German food. Uh, maybe, maybe the like, pig's feet. Uh, you know, not my uh, Pig's tails, pig's feet, not my favorite. Not yours, um... I will take everything else. I love the goulash, the stasel. Now, just eating this bagel just reminded me, I forgot to tell you the big thing that happened yesterday. What happened? That Jen totally cut me off on. She just butted in here and just started ranting and raving and got me all riled up about China again. Sweet, lovable Chinese assholes. Um... <laughs> At Pete's yesterday, 
at Pete's Burger. I ordered my burger, double cheese, no onion, and the onion rings, nice and crispy, which she eats just like I do. Um, she ordered her cheese hot dog, didn't get the cheese, Pete's. You didn't put the cheese on her cheese dog. You charged us for it. Yeah. That's That was disappointing. That's a one-off. That That's not constant. That happened. Uh, However. What they do to the dog. Oh, uh, she loved how they, they cut the dog in half and grill it. She loves that. Yeah. Anyway, that's not the story because she's trying to interfere with me again. <laughs> you keep talking about food. The big story was about halfway through the burger, it occurred to me, <laughs> do you know that you're chewing on both sides of your mouth without even thinking about it? First time in like months, like I'm talking six months, eight months, I, I'm chewing on both sides of my mouth without even – Thinking about it, uh, no pain, no discomfort, no uh, pressure, nada, pain-free. Uh, man, that was a good feeling. To I realized I went, oh yeah, that's right. I'm eating like a normal, like a normal person. I can eat out of both sides of my mouth at the same time without going. Ah, ah. That was kind of nice. Uh, I'll tell you, that was a big, big deal yesterday. So. That's the big news. Just saying, your, your celebrity guy here is, uh, was... he's alive. Uh, he's coming back. I could start telling you Rocky thing. <laughs> Don't do it. I'll get, a, I'll get a copyright strike. That's true. That's true. Mind you, with me doing the cover version, you might not recognize it. They might not recognize it. <laughs> oh, man. Uncle Bruce? Uncle Bruce, I have six SoFi calls expiring on October at $15 strike price. SoFi. Okay. I paid $99. How long to hold? Um, okay, so you, you're long. You own them. Okay. You, you, you're doing good. Okay. Uh, so the stock is trading at $17.38, up $0.24. Cents. Um the market is off 15 points on the Dow, down four on S&P, down 67 on NASDAQ. SoFi's turned around, gone up again. This is an indication we're going higher. I think we're going a lot higher. You still have till October. Um, you're doing just fine. Uh, you're now sitting on uh, 239 book value plus premium. You're probably trading around around three bucks, I'm guessing. Uh, not bad. Um, you can at any time take a sale and you could theoretically buy up um, buy up additional um, uh, uh, contracts if you wanted to, uh, maybe December's or January's or whatever. You might be buying 15s or 1750s if you wanted to. On the other hand, you, you could sit around another week or so uh, with plenty of time here because we're still December, you know, September 24. Uh, you, could, you could wait you know, until next Thursday, Friday between now and then, see if the stock wants to go to 1850, 1950. You know, this is go time now. Every penny that this thing goes up is more money to you. Um, every penny is, is, um, I think every, is it penny, uh, $60 or $6, uh, you know, uh, goes up a dime. Um, yeah, every penny is six bucks in your pocket. Every penny is $6, the leverage you have. Nice. Um, so look, uh, we're at 1735 today. Uh, this is the high of the day, kind of in the neighborhood of, uh, 1740 here, 6.5 million shares. It's going higher. This thing's going higher. Uh, whatever selling came in, came in. It's over. Uh, this could go to 18, 19 today. It could. I'm not saying it will. But it has every reason to be able to. I, I just don't know if it'll do it. Um, looking really nice. Um, so you don't have to make a move today. Uh, you may want to wait a little while longer. Um, congratulations. I love seeing winners like this. Uh, IBM is a four-letter stock. Um, a quickly chat. We have a type faster. Um, I averaged down on SoFi when it was fourteen fifty. My average is now seventeen ninety three. I can't wait to see it go green. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Um, and uh, here you go. I'll I'll share everything except food, money, and my GameStop shares. You can take my IBM. Go ahead, John. Uh, Uncle Bruce evidently has never had a Vidalia Vidalia onion. He's never had one of those. Vidalia. I have no idea what that is. Um, hi, Jen's hand says Matt. Ha ha, not crunchy enough. Uh, smack him, Jen. Uh, subpar bagels. I'm trying a red onion squash this weekend. I didn't know such a thing existed until Wednesday. Ha uh ha, -huh. Auntie Jen says, Erico. Uh, Aaron, Jen, make him toast his own bagel. Honestly, this guy is such a moaner. 
a moaner and a groaner. I mean, this guy, who does he think he is? Uh, you know, I just, I, I just want a bagel. I want a yeah, bagel. That's, 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 so, that's so wrong. I just want a bagel. You can't a guy get a bagel and get some cream in his coffee. Is that so wrong? You can't a guy get onion rings instead of just raw onions. Is this so wrong? It's so wrong. You're so wrong. Uncle Bruce needs more donations so he can afford a toaster. Yay, Jen, says Sharon. Good recovery, Uncle B. Um, I, IKR, I don't know what that means. Um, John, uh, Uncle Bruce, what did you hit your thumbnail on with? Ouch, oh, this this thing. This is my thumbnail. Uh, I don't want to gross you out, but it's looked like this for 10 years. It's been like this now since 2007. They call it uh, a hammer nail. They call it a hammer nail. Um, it doesn't hurt. Uh, there's no pain. It, 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 it just looks like crap. Um, and uh, I went to a, a you know a specialist in 2007. I said, hey, uh, you know, one day uh, my thumbnail started to de degrade. You know, uh, what can you do? You got a pill? Uh, you know, is there a cream? And she said, there's nothing we can do. Oh, okay. Will it heal itself? No. Will it ever go back to like this one? Never. Is there anything I can do? No. Thanks for going to university. I appreciate it. Uh, nothing. Um, there it is. Yay. Smack. China did that to his thumb. The Chinese did it. Yeah. 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 They did it. Amy up three. Spire up 47 to 1502. 1510. SoFi 1740. Go. Germany is great, except for that one thing they did. Kind of reminds you of that horrible tragedy, you know. Yeah, those guys from like the '30s. Those that one, those guys from like what, what, uh, 90 years ago. Yeah, good cars too. The beer is the important part, though. We know that. The beer is the important part. We know that. Uh, wavy gravy question um, on call writing. Okay. Here we go. Um, if SoFi gets over 1750. And I then sell 1750 covered calls, and then it comes down below 1750. Am I getting that premium than not having to pay it when I buy it back under 750? All right, so if you write a call option, uh, no matter where the stock is, all right, but let, let, let's say the stock's at 1750 exactly on SoFi, and you write a call option, and let's say you bring in um, two bucks, $200 a contract. The stock goes up or down, it doesn't matter. You keep the $200. It's yours now. It's in your account, 200 bucks. You will always keep that money. The only way you give it back is if you were to buy back a contract equal to the contract you wrote. In other words, you wrote a 1750 exercise price contract for October. You don't want to be... Uh, subject to that contract anymore you buy a uh, an October 1750 contract on the open contract market that flattens you out you were short one now you're long one everything is done it costs you $200 to buy it back because the stocks the same price flat even trade you didn't make money you didn't lose money your stocks still there nothing changed stock goes to 1650 three days after you sell the contract for two dollars the stock option is trading at a dollar fifty you buy it back you keep the 50 cents difference you're paying 150 to buy it back you got 200 when you sold it you keep the 50 bucks it's yours or the stock goes to 1850 the contract's trading at three dollars you buy it back for three dollars you lose a hundred dollars. You you got to cough up three hundred bucks. You have two hundred. You got the two hundred. You got that. You got to add a hundred to it to buy the contract back for three. You lost a hundred dollars. You still got your stock. Your stock went up. You're richer on your stock, but you lost a dollar on the contract. Okay. Nothing happens. You sold the contract for two dollars. The stock's at seventeen fifty. October comes around. The Friday comes around in October. The contract's going to die that day. The stock's at seventeen fifty. Your contract is seventeen fifty. Exercise price. The value of your contract will be like a quarter in the morning. It'll be worth fifteen cents at lunchtime. It'll be worth a dime with an hour to go. 
with 15 minutes left to trade, it'll be worth a nickel. And at the end of the day, it is worth nothing. Stocks at 1750. The contract's at 1750. The contract has no value. The stock opens, it closes at 1749. It has no value. The, the stock closes at 1751. The contract is worth one penny. It's worth ten. It's worth uh, ten cents or, or dollar. It's worth a dollar. You can you can buy it back for a penny, and be done with the deal. You can buy that contract back anytime you want. Same day you write it, the, the day after, the week after, the day before it expires, the day of expiry, whenever you want, you can buy it back. It's all depending on what the stock is doing, how much time there is. That's how this deal works. All right. Check out my classes. And you'll figure this all out. Okay. Swooshing down the autobot at 130 miles is fun. 130 miles an hour. Tiring, but fun. Uh, German food is great, except for the sausage. It's the worst. Ooh, sneaky little puns. I like all highways. The autobahns in Germany are dual purpose. Either it's a raceway or it's a parking lot. Um, ME maintaining its price. Uh, that's 20 bucks in the jar, Bruce. Uncle Bruce, swear jar again. Finally down a day. On the day for Matterport, been waiting to buy some calls. $22.32 to 91 cents. Uh, ooh, my bagel's pink now, says Sharon. Uh, nice chewing on both sides of his mouth is a crime, and Jen bringing it up is a crime of the century. Uh, Nicholas, anyone got a crystal ball for the bottom of the Matterport pullback? Only Yoko defies copyright strikes. Robert, uh, stop by to give a thumbs up. Off again. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you, Robert. Uh, my, uh, my grandpa fled Germany during World War II, told stories of the bombing. Good, hello, goodbye, Robert Benson of, of, of Vitali Onion, of Vitali Onion. Uh, Fenville, every, every time you sell a cover call, the premium is to your is yours to keep. For your other question, if cover calls expire today, one over 1750, you'll be assigned. If not, you'll keep your shares. Um, Bruce, have you had a Vegemite sandwich? Oh, no, 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 no. All that uh, knowledge, Uncle Bruce, and you don't know how, what a Vitali uh, Onion is? I mean, come on. I probably had one, but I probably didn't care. Maybe that's it. Maybe I don't care. Have you thought of that? The knowledge is in, is in, is not immaterial. I don't care about what kind of onion I eat. How about, how about that? How about controversy? Ah, this YouTube creator doesn't care what kind of onion he wants. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I'm going to subscribe to this guy. I like guys like that. I'm unsubscribing. I hate guys like that. Okay. Silly Green, how you doing? Uh, what do you think about December 2250? Twenty-two and a half dollar Matterport call for three fifteen. Um, no, too expensive. Too expensive. I wouldn't buy it. I'll, I'll hold off. I'd hold off. Uh, uh, Bash Bruce, uh, make sure your Tesla comes with a toaster when it gets delivered in twenty twenty eight. Aaron, I'd kill for my partner to make me a bagel and a cup of tea. Bruce, seriously, get up and give Jen a hug. She the best. My girlfriend is awful. If you if you read this out, I'll show you or I'll show her later. I'll I'll show her how bad she is. <laughs> Sila, how about a twenty five dollar call contract for three uh, two dollars thirty cents on 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 Matterport? Uh, no, too expensive, too soon, not enough time. Uh, Michael is laughing here. Um, Yippee Kaye says, Uncle Bruce, um, what kind of cheese do you want uh, with your Friday morning wine? Uh, w h i n e. Sounds like you're having a rough time there on the road, laughing out loud. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun. Got my cheese whiz going here. Uh, Sharon, it's time for Bruce to get a manicure. Um, Auntie, uh, sorry, that thumb close-up was too close. Uh, Bama, babe, you have not eaten an onion until you core out of a Vidalia and stuff with butter and push a beef bouillon in the center, wrap it in tin foil, and bake for 45 minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, man, getting me on a cruise ship. I'm sure I'm going to eat that over there. Oh, I can rink time for a new doctor. Erico, uh, RCL up to 90. What am I missing here? Uh, more stupid buyers than smart sellers. Larry, uh, pill, cream, nah, amputation. Um, uh, cool. And Royal Caribbean up 3% gas. Why the face? Uh, why the face? Fenville, Celia, consider the $20 for four and a half, break even $24.50 instead of your $25.45. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, the 20 is in the money, uh, 243 so uh, there's a little less premium there. But I'd like to go further out. I'd like you to go into next year country. We're going to have to talk about this. Uh, British, I'll catch you next week, folks. Uh, have a good weekend. Larry, goodbye, British shilling. Uh, have a great weekend there, buddy. Um, Zach, Bruce, I have uh, SoFi call options I bought expiring next Friday. 
I got a 15 and a 16. A sell now while it's hot or ride out the rest of the week and hope for more. Is there any premium leaf left at one week? Well, you're probably noticing your premium shrinking and shrinking right now. So by 1732, so you got you got book value right now carrying the day, and that's where you're going to make your money. Uh, if there's you know if there's a gain in book value, that's where it's coming from. Uh, I am thinking that the way the stock is reacting, it's got more upside to it. That that's my gut, but. It's your contract, and you got to decide for yourself. Maybe you sell them, and you write a put. You write a cash secured put on SoFi now, and um, maybe you're going to write um, twenty dollar puts good for December or January or April. Bring in a big fat juicy premium, and uh, get paid for the upside of the stock through twenty. Um, look into that. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see, uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, Arco, uh, I bought a, our, our RCL put back when it was in the mid 70s. Now it's been climbing ever since. Sila, Bindle, I see your point. I love this community so much. I appreciate your insight a ton. Thank you, John. I didn't know my chart went past 18 on SoFi. It's so used to seeing it at 14 to 15. I never do it. Go over that. But SoFi, it's a no-brainer. Uh, Island Girl, so tell us what you really think about China. Oh, love the place. People are great. The government is so good. They're just they're peachy. These guys. Oh, I mean, you ever get arrested over there? Put in one of the prisons. It's like a Shangri-La. Oh, it's a holiday on ice. Ah, yeah. oh, I got a love for play. Ben Sheila Green. Cheers, Rob. Uh, John, look at the chart a couple of months ago. It was over twenty. Um. Teabag, hey, hi, Bruce. Should you always wait until the expiry date to roll or buy back a contract? No. 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 You don't have to do that. No. No, 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 no. In my classes, I talk about all kinds of strategies for writing and buying back, writing and buying back. You got to check those out. It, it, it takes two hours to watch some of these classes. It's worth it. There's a lot to understand here. I can't give you an answer in 30 seconds. You got to check those out. Uh, I, I, I really encourage you to do that. What about a shallot? It's like halfway between an onion and a garlic, you know? What about those? I like... Will, will somebody give this guy a volume? Uh, uh, Fenville, um, not always. You buy back when it, it, it dip deep and roll when it pops high. Cool hand. Um, Eric, I thought I'd try a credit spread using Royal Caribbean. Uh, now I get the, I, I get to... Uh, uh, I get something... I learn how to deal with the worst-case scenario. Okay, Lorraine. Uh, Uncle Bruce, how can I find out about your classes? Go to my um, website stockmarketswithbruce.ca that's where you got to go stockmarketswithbruce.ca and when you get there you will see um, the classes that are available uh, for you to to buy um, and um, to watch there's 10 of them stock markets with Bruce I'm just typing it out right now hang on I'll get this done. It's not .com. It's .ca, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Stockmarketswithbruce.ca. Did I spell it right? Stockmarketswithbruce. There it is. There's the website. Go there. The link should be down below in the description. Every Everybody, get over there. Look at the classes. You'll see 10 lessons available. Pick the one you want. You don't have to buy them all. You just pick the one you want. Watch the one you want. Watch two, watch three. Uh, take your time. It's not a race. Figure it out, and then go from there. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Lorraine, for asking. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Um, that's it. I, I could take the China rants, bashing AMC fanboys, but not caring about different types of onions. That's the last straw, Bruce. You've done it. I'm out of here. Uh, all this onion talk is giving me heartburn. I think this turning into a food program, um, Bruce. Should I write twenty two, twenty three puts, or 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 keep it six to twelve months? The huge year plus premiums look so good. I'm already at peace with my selected strike point. Again, it, it, this is a personal decision that you have to make. Um, how active do you want to be in the market? Um, are you happy locking in a big fat premium on a transaction? Are, are you know it, it's your call. It's this. This is to to each. His or her own, to her own, absolutely. 
I got to go here. I literally got to run. Thank you. Take care, Sharon. Um, I swear, have a great weekend and a good break, y'all. I'm out for now, but I'll be back later. You take care, Splare. Uh, Rob, uh, eating onions with Uncle Bruce. Uh, Larry, this has always been a food program. Next to every single name here is a bagel for crying out loud. Think about it, people. There's a bagel beside all of our names. Um, that's all this guy ever does. It's always about food. Uh, don't forget, here's two thumbs up. Thank you, John. Sextair options refuse to drop. Zach, uh, thanks for the soap I answer, Bruce. I'll look into writing a put. I have the guts feeling that's going to keep going up to Bank Charter next week. There you go. DQ Larry is spitting the truth here. It is a food channel. ME is looking pretty, real pretty right now. Uh, ME up 12 cents to 12.32. SoFi up 15 to 17.29. Spire down 22 to 1446. Come on, Spire. You can do better than that. Sell my house says thanks, Uncle B. Uh, can I tell you have strange food there uh, over that over the dam. Um, uh, onion uh, mine dropped sixty percent. Damn it, Jim. Uncle Bruce, would you rather go skinny dipping in a public pool in China or North Korea? Oh no. There's some news at you Yahoo on me apparently. Uh, Fenville, thank you. Uh, Fenville says it's the description under the YouTube channel. Uh, Larry, are are we on for trivia tonight? Seven o'clock Eastern. Be there or be square. For members only. Trivia tonight. Can't miss it. Amy, looking good. <laughs> Aaron, now Bruce, in all seriousness, what about garlic? This makes or breaks my membership, depending on your answer. Well, I don't care what you think. I love garlic. I love the garlic. Mm, love the garlic. The last onion straw. Cool. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Emmy up 13 cents. Um, hockey rink fries versus onion rings. You should explain poutine. Whoa, Emmy. 931. It's right now. 930, 31. Go, go, go. Uncle Bruce, is Sextera loaded with cash after their SPAC? Yes, they are. Um, Revenge of the French. What? Uh, DQ, something to chew on for sure. Uh, Jen, what did you put in his Diet Coke today? Uh, Aaron, yes, garlic is king. You win. I'm staying. There you go. <laughs> Salvage another viewer. The pressure is unrelenting in him. No end to the pressure. Dow, down five. S&P, down one. NASDAQ, down 60. Oh, man. John, have a great day, everybody. By the skin of your teeth, Rob, Bruce is just pandering to Aaron now. Jeez. Yeah, I'm not, like to I'm not allowed to like garlic. I have to pretend to like it. Okay. <laughs> Later, John. Did you have a good birthday? Garlic and onion are the base of all good meals around the world. Uh, same with oil, uh, it was olive oil. Don't forget that. No, the dentist removed that for him Wednesday, laughing out loud. <laughs> oh, man. So much fun. Rocket Lab 1380 down 35 has recovered a bit. Rocket Lab got to 1346, now 1380. SoFi 1737 up 23 cents now. SoFi got to 1744, so we're right up there, right, right around that high. GameStop down a buck 96. Matterport down 83. ME up eight. Smart rent down 46. Spire down 18. ATIP up eight cents. Six terror down 42. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, man. Yeah, top headline. Angry Canadian man rants his hatred of China, then claims he doesn't care what kind of damn onion it is. <laughs> uh, headline around the world. <laughs> Bagel eating YouTuber rants against China. <laughs> Oh, man. As long as this isn't a Chinese onion. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that was good. Mm. So good. <laughs> Anybody have an answer to your frozen team? Um, um, I saw a bunch of, but I had to go through them to get to the uh, option questions. Uh, it wasn't important enough for me to care. <laughs> it's like onions. <laughs> 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 <It's> like... <laughs> I'm going to get smacked later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. That's something, that's something you want to talk about. <laughs> Why don't you get your own YouTube channel and uh, get the answers you want? Now you got time for this crap. Um, we'll talk literary terms. We'll talk literary terms later. It'll be a big hit. One on one by ourselves. <laughs> 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 oh, it was nice knowing y'all. I uh, really appreciate it being here all these years. What happened to Bruce? I have no idea. No one knows where he is. No one can find him anywhere. There are reports out of Calgary that some guy was led out in chains from a hotel at a top secret location and was put in the back of a limo and no one's seen him since. He's buried in the back shelves uh, about Carol and the... Uh... I don't know, Cambridge University. <laughs> he's, been, he's been sent to a concentration camp to learn diction and other English terms. Uh, he's now getting retrained to speak proper English and everything else. We don't know when he'll get out because this guy's a slow learner. Uh, we have no idea what's going to happen to this poor bugger. Um, YouTube viewers left confused and abandoned. Um <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> uh, my cousin uh, asked at Christmas, what do you put onions in when you cook? Um, everything? Uh, uh, DQ says, I said neologism, Jen. That neologism. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. <laughs> FS Spano says, Uncle Bruce, how about buying a May 20 call? See, he's, see what I have to do? That buying a May 20 call on Spire, strike 15, it's about 250 US. So how about buying a May 20 call on Spire? Yeah, $15 strike price, it's about 250 US. And that doesn't sound like a bad price uh, for that kind of time frame. That sounds pretty good. Zach, yes, Jen, we tried. He blazed through it like the layers of an onion. Uh, NTPC, Bruce is drunk. Um, uh, uh, Jordan Brown, Jen, you got the uh, German song Ein Prosit stuck in my head, which sucks because I only know about three words. Uh, Michael, uh, Bruce, Bruce, you got you, you get some good meds from the dentist, maybe? Zach, I said um, Gerund. 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 It's a Gerund. Gerund. They're right. I heard correct answer, Zach. Uh, you're you're not going to, you're not going to jail. Uh, not, not to save me though. Uh, Scott, hi, Bruce. Nice to see you. Well, gotta go. Catch you in the reruns. <laughs> Aaron's laughing. Mike's laughing. Erico, I love ex ex, uh, ex What is this? I love ex uh, exhausted. I think it's exhausted. Bruce on Fridays. Zero Fs yeah, left. Um, right. Auntie Bruce, you usually wait till trivia to get drunk. Starting early today. Uh, yeah, and is this Power Hour, uh, Zach? Secret to successful marriage by Uncle Bruce. Get your own channel. Get your own channel. 
exhausted. Uh, Rob, if Bruce doesn't come back to the afternoon show, we know who did it. We know who did it. Carlos, everything bagels have onion in them. Bruce, uh, don't you enjoy those? Ever have an onion bagel? Love those. I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the onion bagel. I, not a fan. Not a fan. No, no. Sesame seed bagel. Shut up. That's it. <laughs> give, give me a rest. Take it easy. Laughing out loud, Andy. Uncle Bruce think he's in Europe. Start drinking, buddy. Think you're in Europe. A B. Back of the limo, going out in style. Uh, Karen is laughing. Sofi is ripping. Uh, is it? Uh, please rip. Sofi rip now. It's up 48 cents. That's called ripping in our business. Uh, we'll take it. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, Spire's down 15 cents. Come on, Spire. Oh, man. Auntie is laughing. Uh, Garund. 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 Oh, everyone is having fun here. Wow. There's a yay pre-trivia points. Uh, <laughs> get some sleep, man. From Today we'll do trivia on literary terms. Oh, no. Get some sleep, man. Sofi's going. Jen, I will be your alibi. Uh, DQ, <laughs> Jen, please hide the cream Monday morning. Um, Zach. <laughs> uh, Zach says, Auntie, th this is regular Bruce. We've just never seen him with no tooth pain. Uh, you see? Right. Uh, Auntie, better go back, go buy back by 1750. Uh, Mentats, all I want for Xmas is a Sofi oh. bank charter. Aaron, my sofa is green. Oh my God, uh, that's gold, Gerund, gold. Neat, says Ely. Uh, most entertaining Friday so far. Go, Bruce and Jen. Hour sofa is exploding. Go, Aaron. Sofa is up forty nine cents. Uh, that's exploding apparently yeah. in this world. Uh, Bruce is punch drunk from all those Jen hands hitting him all the time. Um, sofa twenty dollars plus by October one. Please uh, see there. There's a request. This weekend's game of the week, which is. Sunday afternoon game. It's the it's the only game on at that time. SoFi Stadium. SoFi Stadium. Buccaneers against the Rams. The Bucks against the Rams. Laughing my uh, um, laughing my um, uh, laughing my Darian. arms laughing my arms off. Um, uh, loving SoFi. Run, run, Forest, run. 1761 on SoFi. Go, SoFi, go. We're up a nickel on ME. We're down 15 on Spire. Come on, markets, catch up. We're up 13 on ATIP to 363. It's running too. Go! IBM up dollar 13. Uh, Microsoft 297, not looking good. Um, uh, Royal Caribbean uh, up 212 to 9028. Ridiculous. Goldman down 191 to 389. One is supposed to be up, the other one's supposed to be down. Unbelievable. It's the bizarro world. Uh, Larry Titus says, Arizona, uh, DQ, I was hoping for laughing my Achilles off um, <laughs> compared to what SoFi has done the past few months. Yes, I consider this exploding, Bruce. Uh, 1765 up 51 cents. We's ex ex exploding right now. We's bees exploding is what Ricky Ricardo would say. 1770, we're exploding to 1770. New high on the SoFi. We're up 56 cents, 9.7 million. Time to run this puppy to 20 bucks and make everybody richer. Yes, please. Bring it on and bring it on now. Okay, GameStop, I bought back my covered call. You can go back up now. There you go. Uh, Uncle Bruce, did you ever think about listening to the song When I'm 64 as a kid and how you really found a woman to honestly say yes to that? You're a lucky man. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Except we never have rented a cottage on the island. We never did uh, rent a cottage on the Isle of Wight. No, we never did do that. Uh, Uncle AB, I want to see Canadian Forest Gump. Uh, Larry, uh, no laughing, my Alabama off. Got to keep it close to why the Florida. Uh, Zach, um, from the bottom of the dip this morning, SoFi is up a whole dollar. 1776, nice round number, nice sounding number too. Damn it, SoFi keeps going up. I'll be able to buy two ply toilet paper, even at COVID hoarders prices. Uh, Robert Fleet, Uncle Bruce, I have three 1750 calls for SoFi expiring December in the green, but lots of time left. Sit on this. Let it grow. Yes, sit on it and let it go. 1774. Larry Titus, that's a nice one. Uh, Carlos, uh, Bruce, did you consider getting many gold teeth as a hedge for inflation while enjoying mastication? <laughs> no, no, no. And I'll be, when writing a put, <clears throat> do you pay the full price? You don't pay anything. <coughs> then receive the premium, or do you just pay the difference? Uh, oh, okay. You got to put up margin. 
you have to put up margin. Now, depending on the brokerage firm, each one is different. But generally speaking, you have to have enough cash in your account when you write the put to buy the stock you are committing to writing the put on. So if you're going to write a $20 SoFi put, you have to have two grand for one contract because that's 100 shares times 20 shares that you're prepared to pay for, two grand, two grand. But if you can get a $4 premium for it, you're bringing in 400, now you're sitting on $2,400. The broker is very comfortable with that arrangement. Each broker is different on how they want you to do it. Some with margin accounts might let you put up less. I don't know, you gotta check that yourself. Auntie, one of my uh, SoFi call sell limits just exercised, oh my God, SoFi. We're at 1771. Uh, gold tooth. I'm laughing my Achilles off. Uh, you got to get on that cottage rental. Maybe an Airbnb will get you the technicality. Maybe it'll get you that technical. Uh, Root Auntie, I uh, thank uh, the little baby Jesus. I had the presence of mind to buy a bunch of SoFi calls last week. Um, Free thinker make sure the gold teeth will look so good with that pimp coat, Uncle Bruce. Go for it. It's hard to leave you all, says Flair. Uh, thank you, eight pounds, six ounce, little baby Jesus. Uh, uh, Aaron, right, Bruce, off to work whilst everything is going green so I can ignore the charts for the rest of the day. Uh, ciao, and thank you all for the great atmosphere today. Aaron, thank you. Have a great weekend and everything else. Love that you're here as always. Auntie, LOL, thanks. Michael, I, I even upped it yesterday, but then I forgot about it. $510 in gains. I'm going to take it. Uh, Carlos, um, two ply and one ply toilet paper are not a good long-term investment. Use the profit from a recovered a covered call to buy a bidet attachment for the toilet. Now there's an investment. Now you're talking. Uh, a B, laughing out loud. Got got a notification. My dead 2250 SoFi call for October 15 with 26.2 break even is now worth 17 dollars total. Hopefully it'll get some. I'll get some of this back. 1769 time for SoFi to take a shot uh, Michael anti PC heck yeah NW Bruce thanks for being very responsive today to our questions you're welcome I like to imagine Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt Zach later Aaron laughing out loud DQ laughing out loud Thy Jesus likes to party and the same AB laughing out loud oh my gosh you guys oh that day Come on, stocks, keep going. 1770 on SoFi. GameStop down 287. Rocket Lab down 29 cents. Matterport down 91 to 2232. We got Emmy up a nickel. Smart Rent down 43. Spire down 20. ATIP up 16 cents. Uh, Sextera down 38. We're down on AMC down 25. Robinhood down 94. Um, SMH uh, Manic Vectors down 142. Home Depot up 71 cents. IBM up a dollar two. The Dow down 56 points. We've got Microsoft down 230. Apple down 88. Tesla up 739. Bed Bath Beyond down 64. Blackberry up 21. Royal Caribbean 9010 up 194. Goldman Sachs down 246. A crime of the century. Uh, there you have it. Uh, 1772 on SoFi. Come on. So far, Uncle Bruce, I have fourteen hundred so far at twenty dollars average. Use five grand cash to bring average down, or hold cash to use it on calls on Rocket Lab or Matterport. I own less than hundred on each of those. What do I do? What 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 do I do? Oh man, I tell you, this used to be so much easier. It's not that easy anymore. I uh, I don't know. Um, uh, thank you, T.O. Thanks, T.O., uh, so much for this donation from Albert. Uh, Albert, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that donation on PayPal. Um, what do you do with this $5,000? Well, you've got options. Obviously, you have, you have choices. You have, you, you, you have ideas. You have ways to go here. Uh, you could look at options on both uh, Rocket Lab or Matterport. Uh, you could. Um, but Matterport has had a run here uh, where Rocket Lab had a run and it's backed off significantly. Maybe Rocket Lab's the place to go. For the next run uh maybe that's the way to play this or maybe it's time to get some me options because me is showing signs of life maybe that's the one you got you got things to think about with a uh, sofi is so fly he made it again uh carlos did we even pay attention to the market today it was all onion futures uh uncle bruce you have to try the vietnamese subs from tt um carlos we covered milk puts as well uh, a tuxedo t-shirt because he wants to be respectful, but he came to party. I like to party, so I like my Jesus to party. Uh, frozen concentrated onion futures. Um, let's make Bruce a batch of onion infused milk. Oh, you guys are cruel, cruel people. 
Unbelievable. Um, 1768 on so far. Oh, my gosh. The Dow's down 55 again. We've gone negative on the down near the low of the day. Uh, down 8 on S&P, down 84 on the NASDAQ. That's where we're at. So that's it. That's it. Uh, man. <clears throat> Uh, headline, the pre-COVID economy is not coming back. A top Fed official says, get used to a new normal. Uh-huh. I don't know. Let's see what's going on. <clears throat> um, here we go. U.S. Justice Department. Here's a shock. Uh, reaches a deal with Huawei CFO held in Canada. Surprise, surprise, they reached a deal. Wow, we, how about that? Golly! What was the name of the sergeant in Gomer Pyle? What was his name? Oh. Remember his, I don't remember. Anybody sergeant. remember? What was the name of the sergeant in uh, Gomer Pyle USMC? Golly, sergeant. They found a deal. Sarge, golly, Sarge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have calls that expire in December on Matterport. Uh, $15 strike price, $17.50 strike price, $20 strike price is all expiring in December. Take profit and roll for further out or wait a few more weeks. I believe it's going up, so that's not my question. Yeah, I would sit tight, do nothing. Let this baby go. Uh, you're about to make some money here. You're coming on. You're about to go positive on everything. Uh, Zach, this cow's got into an onion patch. Um, milk from a cow that got into an onion patch. Okay, um, let's see. Thanks, Uncle Bruce. Uh, let's see. Those top Fed officials that are able to insider trade all year long. Uh, is Sergeant Carter. Sergeant Carter. See, you guys. Gunnery Sergeant Carter. You guys, oh, man, if you guys got memories, Sergeant Carter. Sh Shazam, pile, Shazam. <laughs> Golly, they reached a deal with the Huawei executive that's been held in Canada. Well, how about that? She's going to be allowed to go free. And, well, will that be something when the Chinese get her back? Wowee, uh-huh. I say we put her into a maximum security prison right now until they let our guys go first. How about that? Why don't we play little games here? Uh, we're, like, upset. How about that? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just I an old friend. Right? I didn't go to diplomat school. That's the problem. I never went to. I, ne I wasn't going going to the. Glad to be live. Glad to be live with the quote gang for once. Y'all were killing me with all the Ralph Wiggum quotes last week. Says Zach, <laughs> DQ. I want to say Sergeant Holka, but that was with stripes. <laughs> yeah, Sergeant Holka with that big toe. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Sergeant Carter, golly, Sergeant Carter. So far, it looks like it would go on with climbing. I think, I think it'll go. I think sorry, I think so far is going higher. <clears throat> I think so. We ain't seen nothing yet, kids. 25, 26, then we'll start talking. We have got a ways to go. Huh? Hmm? Oh, man, now she's singing BTO Overdrive. With It's out of control. What's in your wallet? Uh, what are you drinking over there? I don't know. Oh, she's got that chocolate thing going. She's on a sugar high. I can't help her. It's it's out of control. AB, she was wanted for money laundering, also setting up a shell company in Texas to sell export control electronics to Iran. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Well, you know, <clears throat> she screwed up Canada real good. I'll tell you that right now. Zach, um, the only uh, Ralphism you missed, I bent my Wookie. <laughs> uh, want me to fluff pillow? Uh, nice as ask it. Um, um, Rob. Still no idea why SoFi is going up, though. Um, must be some insiders know something about the charter. Uh, maybe it's like way oversold, uh, like way oversold, and now there's some bargain hunting coming in here, knowing that this company is on a tear and is growing nicely and it's going to be worth a lot more money, and maybe it's a takeover target down the road. Maybe there's 20 reasons this thing's going up. You cannot have your Chinese diplomat back until you chop down the tallest tree in the forest with a herring. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Zach, uh huh, that's a good one too. Uh huh, yep. <laughs> we want shrubbery. You no, bring us shrubbery, and yeah. then we will set her free. The Monty uh, Python fish. Mm. The fish slapping. The fish slapping. <laughs> the two so fish slappers. Good. Hey, got a gen laugh. It can't beat the Ralphie. Uh, Zach, G, I choo choo choose you. And it has a picture of a train. Uh huh, mm hmm. There you go. Oh, my goodness gracious, moire vue. I don't know, kids. I just don't know how this is going to go down, but it is wild, it is wacky, it is kooky, and it is everything crazy. And what can I say? 
Uh, what a day. Uh, let's see. What's on cbc.ca? They had the top news from Canadian uh, Canada News. Let's see what we got here. Top news from the CBC. Yeah, here we go. Huey's Meng Wangju expected to plead guilty today to U.S. Yeah. court sources. Um, and she's expected to appear virtually in an American federal courtroom today to plead guilty in the U.S. proceedings against her, says sources. And uh, that's what we've got here. Um, yeah, we, we're still waiting for the official, you know what? Um, yeah, good old Chinese. Our old pals, the Chinese. Yeah, such wonderful government people over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, give me some goodies on the questions for tonight, Bruce. Uh, my $10 SoFi January 2023 call option is looking beautiful today. Um, fish slapper sounds like an e euphemism. Um, uh, why the face are you laughing your arms off? Um, wh that's where I saw the leprechaun. He tells me to burn things. Um, I taste burning. On that way, I can make, an <laughs> I can make until like Tuesday, burning. Monday <laughs> before I cash out. <laughs> oh man, Splare, way to go, Splare. Uh, me fail English? That's imp impossible. Um, uh, Arco, and I thought my April 15s were nice. Lucky dog, uh, sell my house. Obama said to get used to a GDP of less than 3% till the Donald got out of office and doubled it. Uh, okay. Uh, Larry Titus for the win. Um, I probably won't make it tonight, but I'll watch the rerun. Michael, this is my swing set. This is my sandbox. I'm not allowed to go in the deep end. Uh, top 15 global criminals. Uh, was that her name or did you sneeze in slow motion? <laughs> Aju. 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 Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> what a day. Uh, what a crazy day. Uh, this is more dangerous than Bruce in Chinatown in Houston, Texas. This is what this is. Uh, we got a 50 cent gain on SoFi, 1764. We have a five cent gain on 23 and me. That's all. Uh, we're down 52 on Spire. Uh, we need more. Uh, I aided the purple berry. There you go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. What can I say? I'm over my time limit. I got to get going. Uh, I, I can't hang with you people for free. I mean, <laughs> I commit three hours. I got to stop. Oh, my gosh. Too much fun today. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. I hope you had some fun this morning. Uh Watching the old man go off on the deep end here. Uh, I'll be back at 3 o'clock this afternoon after I kind of power down a little bit and then power back up. Uh, we'll get ready for this afternoon and see how the last hour works for us this week. Uh, hopefully, you'll all get just rich, 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 and more rich. And uh, we'll kind of go from there, you know. That'd be fine by Moiré Boo. Thank you all for uh, joining us here today and hanging out with Jen and I. We appreciate it so much. And uh, let's hope this market wants to do a little recovery act, although it's been an interesting week, to say the least. Um, we'll see. Uh, time limit. Shim time limit. I know what this means. Bruce is one of them content creators, uh, unions. Okay, time for me to sign off. See you later, Brucey and gang. Uh, too much fun. Thanks, gang. Bruce, everybody, Bagel family. Um, uh, have a wonderful day. See you all this afternoon. Thanks for the show, Uncle B. You know we love you. We have a great break. See you all later. Take care, Uncle B. We'll see you later. Get some rest. Later, Rob. Take care. See you later. Have a good break, Uncle Bruce and all the others. Check out if you gave a thumb. Give Bruce a thumb. Enjoy your our break there. You have some onions. You have a good one there, Uncle Bruce. Uh, very enjoyable as always. Thank you. And have a good break. Milk that cow. Um, thumbs for Bruce. Can I recommend one more time you guys check out CTLP? No. Sorry to be annoying, but unattended part of sale systems are the future. No. Have a great afternoon all. No. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, we have 483 thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. There's 17 of you out there that can put a thumbs up together right now. We can get the 500 thumbs up before I shut this down. That would be really good. We're only 483 sitting here. We only need 17 more. Hit that thumbs up button if you can for me. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Please hit the thumbs up button. Do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, I'm asking for thumbs ups. You know that. Uh, 485, uh, 15 to go. Uh, 488, 12 to go. We're coming in on a thumbs up count here. The meter count going for 500. 491 down, 9 to go. 9 to go. Only 9 left. Oh, 495, only 5 to go. 5 to go, thumbs up for 500, thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. It is coming in. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. It's got to be happening. Booyah. 502 thumbs ups. You guys came through for me again. It's incredible. I thank you so much. 504 and counting. We're going higher on the thumbs ups count. 508. Thank you, everybody, so, so much for that. 
I appreciate it. Uh, Jen appreciates it. Uh, YouTube appreciates it. The world appreciates it. All planets appreciate it. Even Pluto, which is not officially a planet, actually appreciates it. Let, just take my word for it. Okay, I talk to Pluto from time to time. It's all good. Pluto's happy. Uh, 1767 up 52 cents on SoFi. Even SoFi appreciates it. So there you go. If you're giving me a thumbs up, you want SoFi to go up. If you don't give me a thumbs up, you hate SoFi. So don't hate SoFi. Love SoFi. Give me a thumbs up. 516 have come in. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it's what it means. It's what, it's, it's, it's what the Chinese would say. Oh, it's what the Chinese would say. Pluto will always be a planet to me. Thank you, Freethinker. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's all good. All right, guys. <laughs> We'll talk to you later. Um, yeah, here we go. That's right. Uh, that Ming was under house arrest to live in her mansion in Vancouver. There are two justice systems for sure. Yes, there's the Chinese justice system. And then there's the Canadian justice system. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's been just a ball of laughs from our Canadian guys. Just a ball of laughs. Okay, guys. Um, talk to you later. Uh, trivia hint, Pluto, not a planet. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>